Giants locked in a three-way tie with Phoenix and Washington for first place in the NFC East. The Eagles just one game back. Good afternoon. I'm Pat Summerall. You know, the Giants said after last week's comeback against the Detroit Lions in the Meadowlands, they felt that was the best football game they had played all year long. Maybe the best since the Super Bowl year of 1986. With me, of course, is John Madden. I'm not sure. I don't think anyone is quite sure how good a team this is. What do you think? Well, you know, it was interesting. Bill Parcells was telling us last night that he had a meeting with his team on Friday, and he said, you know, he said the Super Bowl was a couple years ago, and he said that team was a championship team. He said, you guys are 10 and 9 since that Super Bowl, and I don't think that this is the same type of team. They're, they're not playing uh, the same offense, the same defense. They're not doing the same on special teams. And, I have a feeling that when the Giants are really the Giants, it's when they can run. And that's what I think they need, because when they can run the football, then I think Phil Simms is a more effective quarterback. I think the defense is much more effective, because they don't have to be on the field as long. This is the good part of their schedule. I think if they are going to be champions, if they are going to be a playoff team, they have to start making the move now. John, you know the Atlanta Falcons, the opponents today are 1-6. and six. Let's face it, they are not and have not been a very good football team. Today, though, they get somewhat of a shot in the arm with the return of their young quarterback, Chris Miller. How will that affect it? Well, you know, that's a big thing. I think that the bad news is the Falcons are 1-6. and six. The good news is that one game that they won was against the San Francisco 49ers, one of the best teams in the NFL. And that's when they had Chris Miller at quarterback. Well, they're getting him back today. And I'll tell you, this is a different team with Chris Miller. Now, we don't know right now if he's going to be as effective because he's coming off an ankle injury. He's wearing a heavily taped left ankle along with a brace on that foot. So it's going to be interesting to see how effective he is. Because if he plays like Chris Miller, this is a different Atlanta team. This is Greg Davis. The young Atlanta Falcon place kicker kicking off to Mark Collins and Kenny Hill for the Giants. Davis gets it underway. Short kick. It's going to be Collins. He slides down at about the 15 and gets back up and gets out the outside the 20 to about the 24. Elbert Shelley knocked him down. Phil Sims, of course, will start at quarterback for the Giants. Here's the defensive line he'll be looking at. Mike Gann, Tony Casillas, Rick Bryan, all first-round draft choices. The linebackers, Andre Bruce, first-round choice this year. The first player picked, John Rady, Joel Williams, and Mike Reed, starting in place of Marcus Cotton. Butler and Case, the cornerbacks, Brett Clark and Robert Moore, the safety men. First and 10 Giants on their own 25. Lionel Mandel on the move, and Joe Morris gets the carry. A yard, perhaps, stopped by Rick Bryan. Phil Sims, the quarterback, Joe Morris, Maurice Carthon, Lionel Manuel, Stefan Baker, or Stephen Baker, Zeke Moat starting at tight end in place of Mark Bavaro. William Roberts, Villiard, Oates, Moore, and Riesenberg up front. Second and nine. In back to throw. Has good time. Gets it to Maurice Carton. Brett Clark finally stopped him, but a pickup of 21. Sim to Maurice Carton. There is the place kicker, Paul McFadden, not Raul Allegre. In practice on Friday, Allegre pulled a groin muscle. And the Giants were lucky enough to have McFadden on hand, so he'll be doing the kicking today. Lionel Manuel split wide to the right. Baker to the left. Morris hit behind the line. Scrimmage surged ahead for a gain of one. Stopped by Mike Reed. You know, one thing I know, the Giants looked at the statistics, and the team that's last against the rush in the NFL is the Atlanta Falcons. So, as Phil Simms was saying last night, you know, he said, every game we play, we want to be able to start off running, establishing the run. He said, but it doesn't always work that way. Second down and eight. Just shy of the fifth. Hand off to Morris. Morris hammers into the Falcons secondary for a giant first down. Stopped again by Reed. Morris got 13. 
Well, they ran right in there behind Eric Moore, the rookie guard, Doug Riesenberg, the second second year tackle. These two guys right here do a nice job of blocking to give Joe Morris the hole to that right side. You see, it's a little delay or draw. Block to the out. Carthon leads, and Morris runs right through the hole. Carthon did a good job of leading. Fine block. Sims back to throw. Going for Baker. Intercepted in the end zone. The Falcons have the ball. Scott Case came up with it. You know, it was interesting last night, Pat. Bill, Bill Sims says, we're going to work on Scott Case. We're going to go with Stephen Baker on Case. They did it. Case won the first one. So the Falcons will take over their first offensive possession at their own 20. Oh, give me land, lots of land under sunny skies above. Don't fence me in. Now UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, down under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. Don't fence me in. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Today's Duracell batteries are built to last up to 30% longer than the ones we made a few years back. Guaranteeing a long, happy life. Today's Duracell lasts 30% longer. Regardless of what some people think, all spark plugs aren't alike. These AC Copper Core plugs match my car's specs for up to 30,000 miles of high revving firepower. AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. When it comes to making a serious decision, my brother Tom is a lot smarter than he appears to be. Like most thinking Americans, Tom is looking for a contemporary, innovative leader. A leader with quality he can believe in. A leader he can trust. Yeah. Now, he has looked at a lot of television, listened to claims from all sides. Yes. And after careful consideration, Tom has made the smart choice. And that choice is... Magnavox! The sign. The sign. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. John Settle, who has, as John Madden mentioned before, three games over 100 yard games. He is number 44. He's been the bulk of the Atlanta offense since Chris Miller went down. Miller's missed the last three games. That's the book on him. Five TDs, five interceptions. First and ten Falcons, their own 20. Dixon was the man in motion. And off is to James Primus. Who was in the backfield with Settle. Here's the interception. Yeah, watch Scott Case, Pat. He's playing way off of Stephen Baker. Look, he's more than 10 yards off. He's waiting for that up. He's playing the deep one all the way. Look, he has that 10-yard cushion. He just backs up, backs back, keeps it up. And it takes Baker almost 20 yards to catch up with him. And then Scott Case can run with him and get the pickoff. Bring up second and nine. Freeman's the man in motion. Miller with a throwback screen to settle. And he's got some room. It'll be a Falcon first down outside the 30, about the 33. Perry Williams stopped it. Miller will be looking at this giant defense. Eric Dorsey and Leonard Marshall, the ends. Jim Burt playing very well, the nose tackle. Banks, Pepper Johnson, Harry Carson, Lawrence Taylor. And the secondary, Collins and Williams, the corners, Terry Kennard and Kenny Hill, the safety men. Atlanta first down. Ball is at their own 33-yard line. We're in the first quarter. Eleven oh eight left to play. Miller makes a draw play. Stacy Bailey. Gain of 14. Pepper Johnson made the stop. Settle and Primus, the runners. Bailey and Dixon, the wide receivers. Ken Wisenhunt, the tight end. Up front. And this is a solid offensive line. Ken and Scully wrap off the center. 
Bill Freeling at right guard. And Houston Hoover, the rookie in right tackle, and he's a good one. Watch on that last play, Pat. Lawrence Taylor hit John Suttley after he makes that draw. Miller again back to throw. Chased out of the pocket. We'll see how mobile he is. Pretty quick. Chased out of bounds. Keep in mind that left ankle is very heavily taped, and it also has a brace on it. Chased out by Carl Banks. You know, he's also wearing high top shoes. We can see that he's wearing the high tops, but he said that he's he's always worn the high tops on grass. He said and he's wearing the, he wears the low tops on artificial turf. So the high tops aren't the new thing, but you see that left ankle there. You can see the brace is up outside and on top of the high tops. After this play, we'll show you the tape job and what's underneath that brace. Second and 16. Settle with the man in motion. This is Freeman to the 45. Stopped by Pepper Johnson. Here's what's under there. Well, the thing is, is, is they put the normal tape job on first. See, now this is just a normal. They have the white tape, then they put the elastic tape, then they put another thing of white tape over it. It's almost so like a cast. Almost a cast. Then he puts his sock on, then he puts the brace on over the sock, and then, of course, eventually the high top shoe. That's about as much support as you can get in playing a game and be able to move. Falcons go out of the shotgun, and here comes the giant blitz. Miller was hit just as he let it go. They brought a man from the outside, Perry Williams, I think, or Kenny Hill. He's the safety man of the corner. And the Falcons didn't pick him up. You know, it was an interesting thing. That was really the first time that the Falcons have gone to the shotgun. Miller is not a shotgun quarterback. The Falcons aren't a shotgun offense. But because, again, of his ankle injury, they put that formation in. He did tell us yesterday he had played some shotgun when he was in college at Oregon. But not since then. The Falcons have never done it. Rick Donnelly is the runner. And a good kick in the direction of Bill McConkey. Who handles it up to Giant 15. And is cut down at about the 22 by Tim Gordon. Seven yard return by McConkey. An official is down on the far sideline as the Falcon defense approaches. Nothing, nothing with 9 12 remaining first quarter. There's a reason why, wherever he goes, Spuds McKenzie has so much fun. He's always in control. Spuds knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. Be a good sport. Know no when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. You wouldn't believe the stuff my dad had to do to get his hands on his dream machine. <laughs> you name it, he'd do it. <laughs> Here's my dream machine the new Cutlass Supreme. And all I had to do to get one was go to my old dealer. This is not your father's old mobile. Ignition. This is the new generation. Wow. Buy a new 89 Cutlass Supreme by November 30th and get $500 cash back. What's so special about Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger? Bacon, bacon, and more bacon. It's the only bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon. So come in now and grab one while they're hot. Everyone knows Dristan nasal spray starts to work fast. But just how fast? Faster than Dolly can pick up a $5 tip. Faster than a politician can shake hands. Now, Dristan nasal spray has a new spray pump. Nothing works faster or is more effective than Dristan to relieve nasal congestion, even sinus ah. pressure. So, if you want relief... Faster than a frog on a hot rock. Try Dristan nasal spray. It's faster than... Pat Summerall and John Madden. We're at Fulton County Stadium in Atlanta, where the game is scoreless between the Giants and the Falcons. 9-12 remain first quarter. Each team has had the ball once. First to 10 Giants from their own 23. Joe Morris at the line of scrimmage. Maybe he got a yard. 
Joe Tony Casillas, excuse me. I was going to say Joe Morris uh, gained that yard, and he's now the all-time giant rushing leader. You know, he came into this game, he needed 10 yards, and of course he has that. Here we see Tony Casillas. Again, that's what a nose tackle has to do. You go into the center, hit it by him, play the center off, and then right down the line for the run. Morris passes Big Red, Alex Webster, the all-time leading rusher. Sims fakes to him, stands in the pocket forever, waits to Lionel Manuel. First down, Giants outside the 40. Stephen Baker, beg your pardon, was not Manuel. There is an example of what a wide receiver has to do. Come back to the ball. Watch Baker outside here. He's going to run his hook. Now watch him there. He stops. Now he works back. You see him work back? And in working back, instead of being behind those two defenders, he gets in front of them. Okay, the guy that was a master of that was Fred Bolitnikoff. He did exactly for years what Stephen Baker just did there. Sims again. That in the direction of Manuel. Incomplete. Right now for an NFL update, let's take you to Brent Musburger in New York. Well, Pat, in the Grudge Bowl in Philadelphia, the Dallas Cowboys draw first blood. Out of the shotgun, they hit Alexander, who tears away an 18-yard touchdown, and now it is 7-0. And the big one in the AFC Central, Bengals just scored. They lead the Oilers 13-0, back to Pat. Nothing, nothing here. 7.51 left in the first quarter. Second down, Giants from their own 42. Sims to Morris. Morris by Rick Bryan, but he gained five. Early in the first quarter, Bill Parcells was thinking that's not a bad play for us. It's called a roll draw. Early, they ran it to the right side. Remember, Carthon leads, Morris carries the ball. That time, they just picked up five yards running it to the other side. That's what you do as a coach. If you find something that goes, you stay with it. Sometimes you move it back right to left or just stay on the same side. You made the good yarding. Third and five. McConkie was the man in motion. Sims with time. Throws behind the intended receiver, McConkie. McConkie. And Tim Gordon put a hat on him. Yeah, that really exposes a wide receiver. What Sims has good time. He has a good lane there. And he, you said he threw it behind McConkie, made McConkie have to reach back. And while he was reaching back, Whoa, he took a hammer job there in the middle. Ari Buford, who's been excellent. Will punt for the Giants. Lou Barnes back deep for Atlanta. By the scrimmage, just short of the 50. Long count for the Giants. Buford. This one off the side of his foot. Last two weeks, he's been excellent. But that one is far from even being adequate. A 10-yard punt by Buford. Falcons get a break. You know how moms are like. You bring home a new guy, they put their foot down. Come home a little late, they put their foot down. Well, my mom's no different. I get this great new Oldsmobile Cutlass Cali with a quad four engine. And what does she do? You got it. This is not I put my foot down. Uh oh. This is new generation of old. Buy a new 89 Cutlass Calais by November 30th and get $500 cash back. This is my boy. <laughs> Don't ask me who wound him up. In his favorite outfit, in his favorite room. He was 13 months old when his dad died. But because we thought about those things, I've been able to keep the house. That was a gift Dan gave me. That and this kid who looks just like him. Nationwide is on your side. Some people take chances on car maintenance, but I don't. Give me AC filters every time. AC filters match the original specs on my cars like a nut on a bolt. AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Do you know why Spuds McKenzie has so much fun at parties? Because he's always in control. Spuds
Pops knows it's cool to live by one simple rule. Know when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser-Busch. The perennial beast of the East, Penn State, takes on the newfound power of Major Harris and sixth-ranked West Virginia next Saturday on CBS Sports. 7.02 left to play in the first quarter. No score between the Giants and the Falcons. Atlanta first down at their own 43-yard line. Dixon is in motion. Pitch back to Settle. Settle has some room. Picks up good yardage out of bounds in front of the Giant bench by Perry Williams. A gain of perhaps 11. You know, this John Settle is an amazing running back. We were talking yesterday, and, and Chris Miller was saying he has great ability to make the first guy miss. That time, the first guy was a pretty good player. It was Lawrence Taylor. And he not only made Lawrence Taylor miss, he put him to the ground. I mean, this, this guy has come in. He's a free agent, second-year guy, Appalachian State. Came in for Gerald Riggs and has had three games over 100 yards. He's in his second year and sort of went unnoticed last year. Was not drafted, as John said, but he has certainly played well. Miller. Oh, indeed. Incomplete and no flag. Intended for Gene Lang. They got from Denver. You see Gene Lang out there. Remember, he was a running back that the Falcons got from the Denver Broncos when uh, Tony Dorsett came over there. I tell you, that, that looked like uh, interference to me. I think the, the fans were calling for it. I think maybe on that one, the fans were right. It looked like Terry Williams was on him before the ball got there. Second and 10, the Falcons at the Giants' 46 yard line. Chris Miller quarterback. Wisenhunt. That's Gene Lang. They told us he was going to see a little bit more action today. He stopped by Pepper Johnson for a loss of one. As you look at Gene Lang there wearing that uh, that eye shield. We're seeing more and more of that in the NFL. It started a few years ago when a player got poked in the eye then one guy started wearing it then another guy and and a lot of defensive linemen were wearing it, linebackers. Now you see running backs. That's getting to be a big part of the equipment today. Third and long. They go with four wide receivers. Haynes. That's Jesse Hester, the move man. Giants flips the safety man. Miller is chased out of the pocket by Eric Howard. Just gets rid of it. Incomplete pass, they say. Lucky. Here comes Donnelly. Well, Sheldon White was right up there in the line of scrimmage. He was in a blitz position. Watch him. He's the outside guy down here, 39. He starts rushing. Miller sees him. Now, John Settle picked him up. He had a blocker for him. But that was the thing that drove him out of the pocket when he saw Sheldon White coming from his right side. Rick Donnelly back to punt for Atlanta. And Phil McConkey standing at his own 10 for the Giants. He's thinking about getting into politics. Just thinking. High, high. Donkey fair catch at the 11. The Giants start deep in their own territory. Just a 35 yard punt, but very effective. 5.53 left. First quarter. We're taking the new road. We're taking the old. Mama and me were traveling in style, mile after country mile. This is the new generation of old. Take a new look at Cutlass Sierra. This is not your father's old movie. It's my mama's. This is the new generation of old. Buy a new 89 Cutlass Sierra by November 30th and get $500 cash back. Blue Diamond Almond Growers know their almonds are always a main attraction. In fact, folks love the taste so much, they munch them just about anywhere.
Blue Diamond Almonds, anytime, anywhere. Aren't you guys the Blue Diamond Almond Growers? That's right. Thanks. Ten a week, that's all we ask. Seems fair to me. It's here, it's new, and it may change your view of the automotive world. It's GMAC's new way to help you into a lot of car or truck without tying up a lot of your money. And to help you break free with low monthly payments. Introducing Smart Lease by GMAC. Look into it today at your GM dealers. Smart Lease by GMAC. Automotive leasing will never look the same. Saturday on CBS Sports, Joe Paterno's Penn State Nittany Lions make the short run down to Morgantown to face the West Virginia Mountaineers. West Virginia with a win Saturday could spur the Mountaineers on to their first ever perfect season and a possible major bowl bid. Penn State and West Virginia next Saturday on CBS Sports. Back at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Conference over on the sideline. The Giants take over with Otis Anderson. Maurice Carthon now in the backfield. Anderson in place of Morris. Here goes Sims to work. Almost picked off. And a flag on the play. Lionel Manuel, the intended receiver. And that flag is in the area of offensive holding, probably on the left tackle, William Roberts. It is. You know, the Giants want to establish the running game, but they've seen awfully pickish here in the first part of the game. They haven't established anything. Holding number 66, offense. Penalty declined. Second down. You're right. Roberts, Mary Markbright, by the way, is the referee. Yeah, what they're trying to do, I think, is, is get some running going so that they can play pass. Now, that was a play pass where they fake the run and throw the ball, but they really haven't established that they can run yet. Baker and Manuel split wide to the left, but they give the ball to Anderson, and he's hit it right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Rick Bryan led the defense. Three first-round draft choices in the front three of the Atlanta line. And I'll tell you, they, they aren't bad either. Gann, Casillas, uh, uh, Rick Bryan, and then they got... Uh, Andre Bruce, he's an outside linebacker, was the number one player taken in the draft. He really hasn't gotten the feel of this game yet, though. And then on the other side, a second-round draft pick last year, Marcus Cotton. So they're a young team with a lot of high draft choices on defense. Shotgun formation. Hard Oaks, the center, didn't like what he saw. Sims gets it out to George Adams. Stop shy of a first down by Charles Dimry and Joel Williams. Dimry is another of those young players that they think is going to be very good. I tell you, you know, what happens is Bart Oates, look with his left hand, he's trying to signal Phil Sims to get over a little more to the left. I don't think Sims was behind him. <laughs> Sims may have lined up behind the guard. Oates was telling, no, no, get in there behind me. I thought maybe he was feeling to see if he was back there. Hubert. This is still not his best. Lou Barnes steals it. Now gets into giant territory and deeper. To the 35 and out of bounds by Gary Reason. It'll be first and 10 Atlanta at the Giant 35, a 17 yard return. Look, here's Phil Sims. He did line up behind the guard. Look, here's Sims. Here's the guard. Here's the center. Sims is supposed to be back here. Sims got confused. He's lined up behind the right guard. Oates is saying, no, no, over behind me. <laughs> Oh, there's the center. That would be embarrassing. You're waiting for the ball behind the guard. Come back. It goes out the other way. <laughs> All right, the Falcons ball. And the Giants just outside the Giant 35. Miller, the boy right to work. Gets it out to his tight end, Wisenhunt. And he breaks a couple of tackles and gets uh, first down, Falcons. Terry Kennard tripped him up. Let's go back again to New York. Brent Musburger for an update. 
Well, Pat, Benny Testaverde has coughed up his 17th interception of the season high, and the Vikings make the Bucks pay. Wilson hits his tight end, Jordan, four yards out, 7-3 there. Now, big shocker here. Without John Elway, the Broncos not doing a thing. 14-0 Steelers back to Pat. Three and a half minutes remain. First quarter, first down Falcons. At the Giants, 22. Miller back to seven. The first man missed. But there were others there. Settle went out of bounds for a loss of two. Yeah, he's an interesting guy that really looks like he likes to play the game. You know, he's a bright eyed guy and and smiling all the time and laughing and, and always looks like he's happy about what's going on. You, know, you kind of like that. I mean, there's so many guys that are like business and this and they got agents and top draft choices and big money. And this guy didn't have any of those things, and maybe the game is more fun to him. Lawrence Taylor moves over to the left side of the defensive line now. As he's standing up. He comes on the blitz. They get it out to Settle. Settle hammers down to about the 15 before he's knocked out of bounds by Carl Banks. A gain of nine. Just to give you an idea of how effective he's been, this John Settle, in the last three games. Look at this. Well, the thing is, is that is that shows that's total yardage. If this guy isn't a one-dimensional guy, he's he's not only a good runner, but he's also the top pass receiver on this team. And uh, when you get up there in that in that uh, area where you're doing things like Roger Craig was doing him, you're pretty good because I think Craig could be the best back in the league right now. That's Floyd Dixon in motion. Miller goes behind Stacy Bailey. And we'll get a look, I'm sure, at Greg Davis. Miller is the holder, by the way. You know, one thing, the Giants have given this Atlanta team some life. And that's one thing you can't do. When you have a team that's one and six, you come into their place, you don't want to let them have any life. You don't want them to score first. And it looks like the Giants have done that. Yeah. Field goal will be from 32 yards out by Davis. Rookie from Clemson. Perfect from 32 yards away, and the Falcons get on the scoreboard first. Yeah, I think that's the thing that the Falcons wanted to do. I mean, they have Chris Miller back. Things really haven't been going very well. The, you know, they're not getting a lot of fans here. Everyone is kind of down on this situation. I think now if the Giants come in here and they boom, they pounce on them right now, they would have stayed down. But I think when you take a team like this, they're getting their quarterback back, they got a few exciting things going, they jump out on top, this could make for a long day for the Giants. Not a sellout crowd. They've had very few here in Atlanta of late. So the game is blacked out here. But there are some signs of enthusiasm. The Falcons lead the Giants 3-0 as the first quarter winds down. 307 remain. Davis, who just hit the 32-yard field goal. Actually, he was around last year, but not uh, in regular action. So he technically is not a rookie. Short kick. Mark Collins at the eight. And hit down at about the 25 by Rick Bodanek. Turn of 17. And you can see the average starting field position. Much better for Atlanta. Flag on that last play, however. Back uh, at the kickoff spot, they might have been offside. I would think the Giants would have them kick it over again. Offside, number 22, kicking team, re kick. They're bringing them back. And I think they have to do that, Pat. The ball was on the 25 yard line, but the Giants came out here and they don't have any spark. They haven't had a they haven't had anything pick them up on defense. They haven't had anything pick them up yet on offense. And I think they need something and maybe they can get it 
when the Atlanta Falcons have to take a five-yard penalty, maybe they can get it on a kicking game. Now, there's a guy. It took some time to get dressed. Well, the thing is, you know, he wants to get that jersey as tight as he can. Uh, I was telling him last night, that six and the four are getting farther and farther apart. <laughs> he, he doesn't want that center to have anything to hold on to. That's what he said. They're starting to grab it. It's a better kick. Collins back to his own two this time. Well, this is Kenny Hill. No, I beg your pardon. It's Collins. Well, it was neither. Neil Gugamos, who was with the Vikings for a time, they gained two yards. They accepted the penalty. They got it two yards further out. They would have if they did not accept the penalty. First and ten Giants at their own 27. Three nothing. Atlanta lead. to Otis Anderson. Otis delivered a shot and took a shot. Yeah, that's one thing the Giants like about Otis Anderson. I think he's going to be playing more and more, probably splitting time with Joe Morris. But he's gotten so now, as we see him run this counter play, that he finishes off his run. He gets in there behind Riesenberg. Now watch at the end. He has that right arm cocked. The ball to the left hand, and boom, he's going to deliver a shot with that right hand. And he took a shot from Scott Case. Arthon and Anderson. Short yardage. Arthon got it. Picked up three. Again, for an NFL update, let's take you to New York. Here's Brent Musburger. Well, Pat Benny Testaverde now has brought the Buccaneers back. Here is his touchdown pass following that Buccaneer field goal and Tampa Bay right now upsetting the Minnesota Vikings to score 10 to 7. Back to Pat and John. Brent, we have a minute 47 here at Fulton County Stadium. The Falcons leading the Giants 3-0. First and 10 Giants. They're at their own 38. Morris is back in the game. Manual in motion. Morris gets the carry. Gets around the corner and gets good yardage. Flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. Injured Atlanta Falcon is Rick Bryan. It looks like he'll stay in the fray. And that's right where the umpire was behind the defense. That's right where he, he threw the flag was right on Rick Bryan. That was a sweet play and the Giants call that flow 38. And they don't run a lot of sweeps, but they think with this team and their young outside linebackers that they can make pretty good yardage on that play. There's no foul on the play. The clip was in the legal clipping zone. It was in the clipping zone. I bet you Rick Bryan doesn't agree with that. Well, I'll tell you, it's on Rick Bryan. And we're going to see him. He's right here. Excuse me, he's right here. But he comes in. He's going to get clipped. But in this tackle box, in this area, it's okay. See Roberts come down there and clip him right there. I don't think it should be legal anywhere, but it is legal in that zone. Morris got eight, so it's second and two. Here's Carson again. He's close to a first down. He's hit by Rick Bryan, who just got clipped. Made him mad. Hey, there's nothing that makes a defensive lineman more mad than someone going for his legs from behind. Watch Brian that time. He takes on Roberts, boom, right down the line and into the fullback. Roberts, of course, was the guy who clipped him the play before. Even though it's legal, there's nothing that'll make a guy more upset if the guy blocking him than that. First and ten. Sam on first down will throw it. And Morris pulled up. Sims was looking in that direction. Sometimes that angers the quarterback when the receiver pulls up and he doesn't expect it. Well, I think it was a not it was sometimes, the thing that always. It always does, but I think it was a, a thing that they had everything covered out there. The the Falcons were in a zone, and uh, Phil Sims had two receivers out on this side, and the Falcons had four defenders, so he was going to lose that matchup, whatever Joe Morris did. Second and ten. Right at midfield. Pass is caught by 
Baker. And it's a catch. Dave, that is the second move that Stephen Baker did today that looked like Fred Blitnikoff. The first one was coming back for the ball on a hook. And this one, watch the feet. The ball, the hands, both feet inbounds before he goes out. You know, to be able to get up in the air, get both hands up there on the ball, and then think about what your feet are doing is pretty darn good. First and ten. Manuel, the move man, sends it to Morris. Morris cutting back. Hit first by John Rady with an assist from Rick Bryan. Clock running out in the first quarter here at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. That'll probably be the last play. That is the end of the first quarter with the score Atlanta three, the Giants nothing. Motion picture event that names history's most gruesome killer. Somebody must know something. Jack the Ripper, the gripping conclusion tonight. Okay, now, when he snaps the ball to the I've worked with a lot of little people here at the United in. Way Agency. But we don't want to tackle Like all volunteers here, I work without pay your signals. to help children learn. For some, it's learning to overcome handicaps. All right, let's go! Like Ben Drexler. Did you see that play, Ben? His parents were told he would never walk. But one of these days, my friend, you're going to be out there playing just like everybody else. What do you think? Okay. Okay, kiddo. He's 10 years old now, and after a lot of operations and therapy, here at the center, Ben's walking. Someday, he wants to be able to help others. That's why Ben and his dad are my special guests at this NFL game. I'm Jerry Markbright, NFL referee, working with the greatest athletes in the NFL. But none of them has more courage or desire to make it in life than Ben. And that's why I support the work of the United Way, because it brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. GMAC, the official sponsor of America's Dream. And by the new generation of Oldsmobiles. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. Matt Summerall, John Madden, in Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, where the Falcons lead the Giants three to nothing. But the Giants on the move, second and five, with the ball of the Atlanta 31. tight end in place of Bavaro. Morris and Carthon behind Sims. To Morris. Morris down to the 20. A gain of 10. Andre Bruce. Dallas out in front of Philadelphia now 14 to nothing. New Orleans with a 6-1 record. There's a little bit of a surprise right there. 17-0. Steelers over Denver. And that one would shock a lot of people, I think. Cincinnati 21 0 over Houston. Greenland Buffalo in a tie. Hand off to Carton. He picked up six right up the middle. Stopped by safety man Robert Moore. You know, the interesting thing about that formation, Pat, is Joe Morris is the fullback. See, Morris is the fullback here. Carthon is the halfback. It's usually just the opposite. Last week they ran that, led with him, ran the board. Now they just run it back that way to Carthon as a counter off it. See everyone key and Morris, they start out and boom, Carthon comes back against the grain. Same formation. Same play. Second and four. Gain of three, just one yard short of a first down. Stopped by Robert Moore. Well, that's what you try and do with your game plan. You look the week before. They used that formation. Every time they used that formation, Joe Morris carried the ball. So now you come the next week, you show them that formation, everyone's saying, look for Morris, look for Morris, and whap, they hit it to Carthon twice. Now that'll throw that computer out of whack. 
Bill Sims said last night we were talking to him about that. He said we're going to get that straightened out today. Well that was one thing and I think the other thing he was trying to do from it or wants to do from that formation is to uh, play pass from it where they fake the run to Morris and throw the ball. Probably what he's setting up right here. This is the greatest position in the world when you get that that short yardage thing where you have that run or play pass situation. There's Mark Bavaro in the game now. As they come in with their short yardage formation. He has about a half yard for first. Third and short. Reasonberg is over. And plays tight end on the left side. Bavaro and Roat on the right. Aris Carthon hit. And hit hard by the Falcons, by led by Bobby Butler, but he got enough for a first down. Yeah, we're going to see Carthon, he, he becomes the lead blocker here. One thing about Otis Anderson is he runs hard, but he runs too straight up sometimes. And when you run straight up like that into the line of scrimmage, you are really going to get some hits at the end of it. And they got him straightened up, then they got him knocked backwards, but he got the first down. Morris back in the game now. That's Manuel coming back. Morris to the outside. Joe Morris inside the five. Stopped by Joel Williams. It seems like he's been playing here forever. Well, remember he started here with the Falcons, Joel Williams, then he went up the Philadelphia Eagles where Marion Campbell was the defensive coach there and the head coach and had him up there. Marion came back to Atlanta, brought Joel Williams here with him, and he's kind of the quarterback of this defensive team. Giants have had difficulty scoring a touchdown once they get inside the opponent's 20, the red zone, they call it. This will be the 13th play of this drive. Anderson is the deep back. Right at the line of scrimmage, he is hit. No game. Mike Gann was the first to make contact. Yeah, O.J. Anderson is a much bigger and stronger runner, but I've always felt that Joe Morris is a better short yardage runner because, again, Anderson, that, that, that time he just ran into Carthon, but, again, that straight-up stuff really doesn't do it. I, I think what you have to do is I think you have to be able to slither and find holes and gaps in there. That brings up third and goal from the five. Pitch is back to Maurice Carter. Cut down at the four by Joel Williams. And we'll see the new place kicker. I hate to second guess, but those were two dumb calls in a row. Falcon player down, but now Clark is up and okay. Brett Clark got in. I think when you get down there and you have third and five, I think you have to take a shot at throwing the ball. I don't think you give it to your fullback. So Paul McFadden in place of Raul Allegre. Giant kickers, and they've been two. There have been two, Allegre and McFadden. Allegri was 10 out of 11. This would be 21 yards out. And plenty good. Jeff Hotstetler was the holder. And so it's 3-3 as the teams have swapped field goals. 10-26 left in the first half. Introducing a sedan with the heart of a lion. The all-new Toyota Cressida. Inside, the majestic body beats a powerful 24-valve, 190-horsepower engine. Plus, legendary Toyota quality. Quality that has made Cressida the most trouble-free new car sold two years in a row. Cressida for 89, the king of luxury performance sedans and the pride of Toyota. Everything that I handle, nothing will with the designed-in sound of a Delco Electronics music system, now the best seat in the house is in your GM car or truck. Delco Electronics, it's who we are. In the past two years, 500,000 more Americans switched to Liberty Mutual for auto, home, and life insurance because we made their dollars work harder. America, Liberty Mutual.
nature's light, bathing fields of grain, enriching full fresh hops, giving life to sparkling streams, nourishing all the natural things that go into making Bud Light. The light beer that's beechwood aged for a clean, fresh taste that makes Bud Light the one light that outshines them all. 10-26 left to play in the first half. Paul McFadden set to kick off to Tim Gordon and Evan Cooper back deep for Atlanta. Good kick. Cooper. He had to land on his head. Mark Collins upended him. Joe Morris, in the event you have just joined us, has become the all-time giant rushing leader with 4,680 yards, replacing Alex Webster. John, the play calling, we hate to be critical, but I don't understand it. I don't either. The Giants had a first down down there. Joe Morris runs for five yards. Then, then Otis Anderson runs for minus one. And then Carthon runs for a yard. And they didn't even take the shot at the end zone. Falcon first down. This is settled. Over the right side, picked up two. Three three tie. Minnesota 14 10 now over Tampa Bay. Look at the time of possession so far 14 09 to 5 30. But the score is 3 3. Well, the defense ought to be rested. I don't know. Has Lawrence Taylor made a play yet? I don't remember that he has. Uh, he's, he's capable of taking over a game somewhere. Here's Miller. Gets it out to settle. First man missed. Settle gets a Falcon first down. Harry Carson made the stop. Picked up nine. I think that's enough for a first down. I say you're going to see Gary Reeson's miss the tackle there. Lawrence Taylor's going to drop back in coverage on that one. Once Settle gets the ball, watch him. He's right there in the middle of the screen, 44. As we said, he just has that knack of always making that first guy miss. Watch, here's Gary Reason. Swap, he misses. Okay, now let's see who's going to try next. The guy just has a certain feeling there that 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 he knows where everyone is and how to make it make it look like they have something and then end up with nothing. Dean Wang now is in the backfield with Settle. Miller back to throw it. Overthrows John Settle. <laughs> Covered by Carl Banks. See what happened to Lawrence Taylor. Well, the one thing, he's coming over here from the bottom of the screen. He's going against Mike Ken, who was one of the best tackles in the league, one of the best pass protectors, has been for years. At that time, he, he got an inside move on him. But this Ken, as a pass protector, Darn near is picture perfect. He has great technique. He keeps himself in excellent condition year round. Here comes Taylor. After Miller. Miller complete. Stacy Bailey. Pick up a 15. And we were talking to Chris Miller yesterday, and he said his favorite receiver is Stacy Bailey. He said, if I have my choice, when I go back, I will always look first for Bailey. That time, he not only looked first, he watched all the time and got him. Here comes Taylor's rush. He almost got there this time. But you see, the one thing Miller is doing, every, every team knows where Taylor is when they get up there. So if you're going to roll out, you always roll away from him. And that gives you a little extra time. Miller again rolling in that direction. This time he had a lot of time. Firing in the direction of Kennard and Stacy Bailey incomplete. I'll tell you that time did he get did he get hit by Lawrence Taylor though as he threw that ball. Taylor now is on this side. Miller makes a mistake of rolling to that side. So the play before he was rolling away from him. 
Now he rolls into him. And look what happens when you roll into him. Instead of getting rid of the ball before he gets there, you get rid of it just as he gets there. Second and 10. Now he's at their own 49. Hand off to Primus, who gets to midfield, a pickup of one. Gene Lang, beg your pardon, not Primus. Harry Carson made the stop. And they say last week the Giants looked about like this in the first half against Detroit. I guess at halftime, Harry Carson went wild in the locker room, threw a chair, broke a chair, gave this big talk, and of course the Giants came out and turned it around the second half. At practice this week, the Giants had two chairs out there. <laughs> one was for Harry Carson, one they said was for Bobby Knight. They were going to have a chair throwing contest. That's settled back with Miller. Settle hammers a defender. Adrian White. 14 yard pickup. He's impressive. Hey, he is an impressive guy, and as we said, not only is a runner, but he's also the leading pass receiver in the team. Here he's going to run a screen pass. He starts out to the left, gets his blockers out in front of him. Again, always makes that first guy miss, doesn't let the second guy catch him, and before you go out of bounds, at least deliver one blow. Which he did. To Adrian White, Settle has caught four. Picked up 44 yards, first and 10 Atlanta. Settle and Lang behind Miller. There's the Giant 36. Wisenhunt was the man in motion. He's to the 30. Gain six. Stopped by Kenny Hill. Here's what he does for the offense, John. Well, you know, the thing is, we talked about both pass receiving and running the ball if you look he's 57 percent of their offense and uh, again that's without Gerald Riggs again with Steve Dill when he was quarterback and he didn't throw much to the wide receiver so Settle was probably a bigger part of it then than he'll be with Chris Miller he's been a very big part today as well second down this is Lang they needed four they didn't get it They got half of it. Here's what settle is today. 55% of the Atlanta offense. Well, that's probably again what he's <laughs> going to be all the time uh, with Gerald Riggs, without Gerald Riggs. When you when you have something going, uh, keep feeding it. It'll be interesting to see what happens here when Riggs comes back. It should be in a couple of weeks. Well, you know, Riggs is a fullback and Settle is playing fullback, so I'm sure that when Riggs does come back, Marion Campbell is going to have both of them, probably move Settle to halfback. You just about have to have them both in the game as productive as they are. Miller. I think that's Jesse Hester. That should be another Falcon first down as he was stopped by Terry Kennard. Gain of 12. You know, one thing, all these Falcons are making the first giant guy miss. I think that's one of the things where the Giants have slipped on defense is they're not tackling as well as they were. Of course, we see Hester there went out of bounds right. before Kennard ever got to make that tackle. The Falcons on the move at the Giant 21. First and 10. 5-18 remains. First half. Here comes the blitz from the outside. Look out. They got it to settle. The Giants had it covered. Jim Burton made the stop with Gary Reason. The Giants are one of the few teams that bring their corners on a blitz. That time, Mark Collins, number 25, see way up on top of the screen, you see him coming in there? He came all the way out from covering the wide receiver to come in the blitz. Now, he was coming to the side where Miller could see him. Miller saw Collins come and knew he was going to be free, turned to his left, threw it to settle. So that brings up a second and 12. He was lucky to get rid of that.
Dixon. Michael Haynes split wide to the right. Esther and Bailey left. This is Lang barreling up the middle of the crossway. Down to about the 12. Lang stripped him up. Both teams have been having success with this part of the running game. The the quick draw type of thing. You see where they just take a couple of steps and boom, hit that middle. Look at that hole in the middle there. I mean, you could drive a pickup truck through that thing. I mean, Gene Lang is looking for someone to come and hit him. Brings up third and short. Third and two. Balls at the giant. 13. And a 12 plays in his drive. Lang is the lone setback. Now they go with five wide receivers. Back to Lang. He hammers down close to a touchdown. Lawrence Taylor made the stop with Kenny Hill. I think they just outsmarted the defense then. Well, they did. They don't call a play in the huddle on this bat. They get up there, he calls, check with me. And then if there's only five guys playing to run, he's going to run that. He, uh, he, he calls that play. It was an option. It was an audible that he called the option on the line of scrimmage. See what happens here. He has the three wide receivers, one here. Now he looks at this. He decides that he's going to run the option. Sees there's only one guy out there. Knows Taylor's coming. Get that ball out there to line. That play was called on the line of scrimmage. Jamie Dukes, a guard, was in the backfield and Settle takes it in. Touchdown Atlanta. Then they did it in San Francisco with Guy McIntyre. Jamie Dukes leads Settle into the end zone. And so with 2.49 left to play in the first half, the Falcons lead it 10-3. The all-new Toyota V6 4x4 SR5. The most advanced V6 engine in its class. All-new, on-the-move, four-wheel demand. And a brand-new look that says Toyota quality. It's everything I ever wanted. Toyota! You could ask for anything more. The Van Pattens meet one tough customer. Dick Van Patten, you're saying someone can oil and lube my car better than me? Yes, it's called Jiffy Lube. In 10 minutes, the J-Team changes the oil with quality Penn's oil. Here comes the Penn's oil. Replaces the filter and lubes the chassis. Fills the fluids, 14 surfaces in all. Okay, okay, but how much? So well, well, welcome to Jiffy Lube. We'll take care of you like family. J-Team, this looks like the beginning of a beautiful friendship. Malaysia Dada means drugs. In Malaysia, Dada is death, based on a true story. Dada is death. Coming soon to CBS. That's the longest scoring drive the Falcons have put together this year. Good kick by Davis. Gugamos at the one-yard line. Boy, is he hit by Tim Gordon. on the other 41. Next Sunday, doubleheader begins with the NFL today. The Bears go to New England. The Rams go to New Orleans. These Falcons will be in Philadelphia. John Madden and I will be in San Francisco for the Viking visit. 
And the Giants again tackle Detroit second time in three weeks. This looked like a soft spot in the schedule. Detroit, Atlanta, Detroit. So far, that hasn't been the case. Phil Sims operates from his own 14. Otis Anderson behind him. Sims going to throw. Dumps it out to Anderson. Anderson out to the 20. Six-yard pickup stopped by Joel Williams. Sims has had a lot of time. The Falcons haven't put much of a rush on him. You know, Joe Morris gained those uh, five yards when they were going in the other way. Then they, they took him out. I was wondering if there was something wrong with them, but I guess that they're just playing Otis Anderson more and more. <laughs> from the 20 and Sims will throw it again. This time they get there. Mike Gann pulled it down. That'll be the two minute warning. All both teams have all timeouts remaining. Atlanta 10 Giants 3. At his home in France, wine expert Christopher Stevens invited friends to guess the price of a special cork-finished American Burgundy. They guessed between 10 and 12 dollars. How much was the wine from America? You already know. Because it's the same red wine you're probably drinking now. Today's hearty Burgundy from Ernest and Julio Gallo. All the best a wine can be. Hey, Slugger, what's happening? I'm out of here, Dad, and I'm going as far as this $3, and 42 cents will take me. Northwest has some of the lowest fares around, but not that low. While other airlines have prohibited smoking on flights under two hours, Northwest is the only U.S. airline to make every flight in North America smoke-free. There's something new out there. For all of you, the truck for 89. The all-new Toyota 4x2 Extra Cab SR5. Now available V6 power. Real backseat space. And a new look that can only say one thing. Toyota quality. Got it all now. Toyota! Who could ask for anything more? The punishing defense of the Vikings. Can it stop the unstoppable Roger Craig and the 49ers? Next Sunday on CBS Sports. Pat Summerall, John Madden in Atlanta, where the Falcons surprisingly lead the Giants 10 3. Third down. They need six. Sims out of the shotgun. Boad incomplete for the flag on the play. Tim Gordon on the coverage along with Robert Moore. Penalty marker down against Atlanta. Of course, that's in the area when you call that defensive holding. It's not only the penalty, but it's also an automatic first down. Holding number 23 defense, automatic first down. 23 is Bobby Butler. You see Bobby Butler right down here in the bottom of the screen. He can hit during that first five yards, but he not only had the hit, he also grabbed the jersey. First and 10 Giants in their own 23. With time. Baker. Another Giant first down. Dimbry is the man who got him from behind, but a pickup of 23. No huddle for the Giants. They have a lot of time and a lot of timeouts left. A minute and a half left to play first half. And off to Adam. He gets into Falcon territory before he's stopped by Rick Bryan. This is Lawrence Taylor headed for the locker room. Word is that he has cramps. And he's going to get a rest as the Giants take a timeout. Minute 22 left.
somewhere. Right now. There's a clean... Quit. Beachwood Age Budweiser with your name on it. Last year, half of our sales were of products that didn't even exist five years ago. Like our pacemaker that changes speed to meet demands on the heart. We're Siemens USA. Leaders in medical engineering, telecommunications, energy, automation, and electronics with 23 research and development centers coast to coast. Helping to build a stronger, more productive America. We are Siemens USA. Cars aren't cheap, never have been. That's why I never take shortcuts with cheap oil and air filters. Give me AC filters every time. AC filters match the original specs on my cars like a nut on a bolt. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Keep your car running the way it was made to run. Now get up to $8.80 back on AC filters and plugs. See your retailer for details. Coming up at the half, don't forget Brent, Irv, and Dick Butkus with all the scores and highlights. And Leslie Visser visited with Walter Payton this week. He found that even without football, he is still a man in motion. Second and three. High step. And he's got it. Out to Adam. Taken down by Joel Williams. No gain. Flag on the play. Side judge with uh, his message to the referee Jerry Mark Bright. They're walking it off against the Falcons. I think it's going to be one of those five yard face mask penalties. Face mask foul number 54 defense five yards and it results in the first down. That's why Joel Williams was so upset there. You see he's going. He's going for the shoulders, New Jersey. He just got a piece of the face mask. Then he tried to bring the hand down on New Jersey. The official saw that face mask. First to 10. They get a shot at Sim. And they get the ball. Bobby Butler comes up with the interception. Butler gets it back close to midfield. It's a fouled up pass pattern. What you're going to see, two Giants, they were to the left. They both went down. They were down in the ground. Bobby Butler was just standing back there zoning, and the ball was thrown right to him. And he returned at 23 yards. Don't forget the Falcons have all three of their timeouts remaining. And just over a minute left to play in the first half. Word from the Falcons is that Tony Casillas is out of the game. Of course, the defense is out of the game right now, but he's out with a bad back. Shotgun, shotgun for Chris Miller. Settle standing back there with it. Miller just throws it out in the direction of Settle under heavy pressure from George Martin. I know what Bill Sims was thinking there. He said, what the heck happened to those two receivers? Watch him. You're going to see right here as they come out, we're going to see Manuel and we're going to see uh, Zeke Moa. Look, they come right into the area. Look, we can stop it right here. You see them right there. They both hit each other and fall down. Then Butler is just standing back there zoning. You see Manuel and Moat, they run into each other, go down, and then Bobby Butler gets an easy interception. Four wide receivers. As they run the draw play to Settle. And Settle gets good yardage up to about the 45, a gain of eight. Johnny Cooks made the stop. Bill Sims is going to try and figure out why Manuel and Moat were both in the same area so that they could even run into each other. Again, Lawrence Taylor has gone to the locker room. 
suffering from cramps of some kind and he looked shaky. He didn't look very good when he walked into the locker room. He was holding his head for a while. He looked a little woozy there. And I think that the the giant defense hasn't put enough pressure on Miller yet. They've been getting close but they haven't been able to get those sacks or to make anything happen to him. And one thing that the Falcons like about Chris Miller one he has a little mobility but even more important that he has a very very quick release. Marion Campbell was saying to us yesterday that if somebody gets close he'll get rid of it rather than take a sack. Here comes the Giants showing Blitz Miller gets it outside the wide receiver Floyd Dixon and that's enough for Atlanta first down. They have two timeouts remaining 45 seconds remaining now they take a timeout so they only have one. You know the one thing the Falcons really in the last few weeks didn't have a lot of confidence. I think this guy gave him a lot today Chris Miller and I think the other group that gave him a lot of the Giants. They came in here the Falcons didn't know a lot about themselves. They weren't sure how Chris Miller would play if he could play how long he could go. And I think that Chris Miller has shown that that he's OK. And that he's going to really be the future of this team. I think the Giants have shown you can't just throw your helmets out on the field against any team in the NFL. You know, John, he was very impressive. Miller was yesterday. You talk about confidence. There is a very confident young man, very mature. I'll tell you, he played golf at Augusta. You know that, where they have the Masters there and shot a 75. And if you can shoot a 75 at Augusta, you have to be confident, I would say. Wasn't it Ray Perkins who said he wanted all of his quarterbacks to learn to play golf? That it builds confidence. And you're right about that score. First and 10, Atlanta. Miller from the shotgun. Steps up into the pocket. Fires high. Tended for Dixon. He had him. He He's upset it. there too because he did have Dixon. The Giants were in that two deep zone and Dixon ran an in pattern in front of the corner and behind the safety in front of the safety and behind the corner and Miller had him there and the ball just got away from him and took off. We're going to see it come in here and you see him come in the middle here Dixon right there he has him and if he doesn't throw that ball high he's going to have a completion down there. 41 seconds remain. Three wide receivers on the right side. And that's still true. Incomplete and no flags intended for Stacy Bailey. Terry Williams was the closest giant. And the thing is, we're going to see Perry Williams here on Stacy Bailey. Williams can play him tight. He can press him because he knows that he has help deep. You see he has a safety there Adrian White coming in behind him. So you can get up tight. You can take Campbell even though Stacy Bailey is one of the fastest receivers in the league. You can play it that way if you're sure that safety is going to arrive in time. And when he doesn't that's when you get those long bombs. Thirty six seconds remain. Falcons still have one timeout. Left. Miller is going to come out of it. For Haynes, and it must have slipped out of his hand because he had him again. He knows, of course, when you've been off for three weeks, four weeks, you know that, that you're not going to be a shark because he hasn't been able to practice during those things. And you see, the shotgun, he's been in the shotgun seven times and only completed one pass. Of course, one thing, he's not used to the shotgun, but two, those are when they're in that third long yardage. So the Falcons excite some folks, but they've got a punt of Rick Dunley with McConkey standing back at the giant 10 yard line. Falcons lead by a touchdown. Dunley just barely got it away. Gene Lang, a remarkable play he makes. Over Shelby, I beg your pardon. I thought it was Lang. I thought it was 33, but it's Shelby or Shelley. You know the thing is they could do that. Pat. I used to always work on that play with Ray Guy have the punter punt it have the punt return the punt coverage guy go down there and catch it. See he can catch it if there's no 
If there's no receiver there, he can catch the ball before it touches the ground. I don't think I ever did that in a game, though. No. I don't know as I've ever seen that before. You know, it is a, a legal thing to do. You, you can't do it if there's a, a receiver there, if, if they're going to receive it. But if they fair catch, you can come in behind and catch it on a fly. Giants, two timeouts left. They'll just run it out rather than take a chance down here. So the Falcons will head for the locker room, led by Chris Miller. Leading by a touchdown. Leading the Giants. A rather surprising development. the first half with the score at Fulton County Stadium the Atlanta Falcons 10 the New York Giants 3 CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota there's quality who could ask for anything more Northwest Airlines serving more than 220 cities in 20 countries on three continents and by Budweiser Beachwood aged for that clean crisp taste this buds for you At Prudential Bench, rock solid means more than strength and stability. It's having the resources to develop and deliver individualized investment ideas. Market wise means the insight and capability that helps clients find opportunities no matter what the investment climate. If anyone can get your strategy right on target right now, that's it. It's Prudential Bench Securities, rock solid, market wise. Michael Dukakis has opposed virtually every defense system we developed. He opposed new aircraft carriers. He opposed anti-satellite weapons. He opposed four missile systems, including the Pershing II missile deployment. Dukakis opposed the stealth bomber and a ground emergency warning system against nuclear attack. He even criticized our rescue mission to Grenada and our strike on Libya. And now he wants to be our commander in chief. America can't afford that risk. Next Sunday, the NFL's greatest hits are here on CBS Sports. Starting with the NFL Today, then it's Ditka, McMahon, and football's most ferocious defense. Chicago takes on the Patriots and ex-Bear Flutie. Then the punishing force of the Vikings. Can it stop the unstoppable Roger Craig and the 49ers? A doubleheader day of hard-hitting excitement next Sunday on CBS Sports. Twenty to nothing, uh, Dallas. Steve Pillar must be throwing off the front foot for a change. <laughs> he's throwing off his right foot necessarily, you know. But he's thirteen, what, fourteen or sixteen in the first half. What about it, Irv? Where's your well, Eagles? Wait, wait, our update. I just saw the Eagles go in. I guess oh. twenty to six. We're lining up for an extra point, guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a Hawkeye yeah. is! Huh? The Eagles on the scoreboard right now, and it is twenty to six. Uh, America's has been, well, maybe a little premature. Bad feelings because the Eagles ran it up last year in the second game. Just a little bit. Crawford Kerr and Jerome Brown squaring off out there. And, and when they did play football, well, Fleur threw the ball very nicely. And how about this catch by Ray Alexander? 27-yarder, and that set up a touchdown. And then the Eagles strike back on this touchdown that Hawkeye Irv Cross picked up on. <laughs> Randall the Rocket Cunningham zips it to his running back, Keith Byers. And now it is 20 to 7. They add the extra point. Giants and Atlanta 10-3 Falcons with the lead in this game uh, Phil Sims had kind of a tough first half now here he is intercepted by Scott Case he makes a splendid play and then he has a little trouble locating the uh, center in this sequence <laughs> don't you love it Bart Oaks moving it off how embarrassing is that and then he finally gets it right John Stuttle quietly settling in as a star in the NFL. Dick, did you ever see anything like that where a center, uh, he tried to move the quarterback over behind? Well, one time we were playing the Cardinals and Jack and Cannon comes up, puts his hands under the center and he looks and he, he didn't like what he's seeing, so he's gonna call an audible, but the count was on the first sound, so he goes, time out! Pyle snaps the ball, <laughs> it goes up in the air, Larry Stalling catches it, runs for 40, 50 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> I'm sitting on the sidelines, allow me. <laughs> and a big one over in the AFC. Cincinnati, 28. 
Houston 7. The Bengals scored 28 first quarter points. The Oilers a few moments ago got on the board. They've turned the ball over three times. Pittsburgh hammering Denver. Denver without John Elway. And uh, Kubiak has thrown two interceptions so far in that game. Raiders and New Orleans. 6-3 storyline here. Bo Jackson. He pulled a hamstring muscle. Apparently he will be able to return in the second half. Two carries for 45 yards. Detroit, Kansas City. 7-3. Somebody has to watch this game, so we've assigned Irv Cross, and this is his one highlight that he's got. Rusty Hilter to Chadwick. Give me your best note on this game, Irving. <laughs> Talking to our quack research savages, they said that there's not very, going, not very much going on in this game. The score is 7-3 right now in halftime. Of course, Chadwick got the touchdown. We know that. <laughs> in, the, uh, in the AFC East, New England and Buffalo are deadlocked at 13. Scott Norwood has kicked a pair of field goals for the Bills. He now has 77 points already this season. Minnesota and Tampa Bay, Vinny Testaverde, three interceptions in this game, 19 for the season. The record is 42, held by George Blanda after one of the intercepts. Well, Wade Wilson made him pay with that touchdown pass to Steve Jordan. Vinny did have one scoring pass, this one to Bruce Hill. And then on the sideline, Irv, well, Jerry Burns turned loose his favorite combination. He has to be a little irate right now, too, though. His favorite combination, when he wants six in a hurry, Chris Carter. Here, Wilson the Carter for the touchdown. Anthony Carter for the touchdown. You can't. Carter, you're still thinking Anthony about the Carter. Eagles. Uh, Jordan <laughs> just got in again. It's, uh, it is now 27 to 10, pending the uh, extra point for the Vikings. And we'll continue after these messages from your local stations. You are alone. Darkness blankets the city. You hear a sound, footsteps approaching. You turn, run. The danger is real, not imagined. In your mind, you remember there is someone who can help, someone who cares, someone who understands justice. Wednesday night, October 26th, your protection returns at 9, 8 Central and Mountain. Are you ready for the equalizer? This is CBS. Eight six, hurry and you'll make it. Delta Airlines ticket agent Sam Singletary knows how to get people moving. Mr. Franklin, Mr. Franklin, you're back. But sometimes he has to show off a few moves of his own, the kind of moves that made him a first-string halfback. Sam Singletary shares a feeling with everyone at Delta. He loves what he's doing, and it shows. We love Thanks. to fly. Hey, Phil, what are you all dressed up for here? Anniversary tonight. Oh, flowers, presents. How do you get those in the middle of practice? Easy, Bob. Find guys who deliver. In the New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. Oh, who are you calling now? Restaurant for reservations. Then I think I'll find myself a limo to rent. You one heck of a scrambler. All I ever need is New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages and one good receiver. The New Jersey Bell Yellow Page is the one that works. New Jersey Bell, a Bell Atlantic company. It is a leader in automotive products and braking systems. It is one of the largest luxury hotel chains in the world. It is a leader in defense technology. It is an insurance company with over $22 billion in assets. It is ITT. A new ITT. If you're looking for a company that knows how to build businesses into leaders, this is it. Today's game is sponsored locally in part by your Tri-State Pontiac dealers. Welcome back to our New York studio. You know, a surprise this far has been how well the Chicago Bears have done without Walter Payton. As it turns out, Walter Payton is also doing fine without the Bears, although he is now a member of their board of directors. Now, Sweetness is filling his time and making money, giving speeches and running a chain of nightclubs. And as Leslie Visser reports, he's found other ways to keep his competitive motor racing. I've heard a lot of rumors that you're going to get bored, you're going to get tired, you're not going to have anything to do, you're going to get irritable. Uh, all those things haven't come into play yet. I have been irritable, I have been tired, but never bored. <laughs> Walter Payton is still a man in motion, still able to turn it on in the open field. A lot of people say, you're crazy. Well, I think I was crazy for playing football for 13 years and running out there with guys twice my size. The uh, Illinois State Police said, well, you know what? You have a unique uh, gift and skill 
and uh, you have a desire to want to go fast, please take it to the track. So I took their, uh, their advice. <laughs> this is the first award of its kind, and there could not be anybody more deserving than you. This Lifetime Award is one of the many honors to come his way. But his wife, Connie, is a little anxious about his zest for life in the fast lane. I got to throw the bottom driving, but it's sort of taken up the void of not playing football. So if that's what it's going to take to keep him busy and happy right now, then that's fine. I think I can put up with it for a little while. <laughs> I also have Hugh Green's helmet, uh, Mike Quick, uh, Tony Dorsett's. And, uh, Football will always be a big part of his life. And the hardest part of not playing is not playing. The thing I liked the most about football, I think, was the association with the guys every day. And that's not there anymore. To watch a game on TV, I couldn't do it. And uh, to be on the, in the stands, I couldn't do it. Uh, it would, uh, I think it would just tear me apart. I realized that, you know, that was the last time I would be at Soldier Field as a player. Last time I would be in the uniform, Chicago Bears. It was kind of a bitter end because we're a much better football team than what we showed that day, and we didn't do it. He is a man of many faces who would seem to have it all. A beautiful family, a lovely home, and a thriving nightclub chain. And now he wants to own a football team. What is the part about owning a team that you think would be interesting? Uh, probably the excitement of seeing, uh, so like a kid, and you start from something from the beginning and you nurture it and you add to it, you send it this way, you send it that way. And all of a sudden, it comes into maturity, and then it starts to, uh, you see some of the things that you want start to unfold. I think that's it. Even in retirement, Walter Payton is a man who's still on a roll. For CBS Sports, I'm Leslie Visser. Boy, what a guy. You know, I've always felt that the worst football fans in America were retired pro football players because you go to the stadium expecting to suit up and play, and it's hard to sit in the stands and watch somebody else. Can't do it. You know something? Everybody asked me about the best back, and I always said Gail Sayers, but I got to pick Peyton because of his longevity. 13 years, 10 bear, uh, NFL records, 25 bear records. I mean, need you say any more? Great back. Great back. Now they're setting up a match race between Walter Payton and Paul Newman. U.S. 30 drag strip. Be there. Now let's send you back to the stadium in a game you're enjoying on CBS. Hi, I'm Imus of the Morning. You don't have to be a sports nut to enjoy New York's most entertaining sports team. Just turn on the new sports radio 66 WFAM. wasn't a fantasy. If living with obsession is a sin, let me be guilty. Now, your gift with any $25 Obsession for Men purchase at a &S. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by UPS. We deliver to every address in the U.S. and to 41 countries worldwide. Duracell, the copper top battery, it now lasts 30% longer. And by Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? Get ready for the second half from Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium, where the Falcons lead the Giants 10 to 3. And look what turnovers can do for you. They lost to Detroit. They were even against New Orleans in the one game they won. They were plus two in the turnover column, and today, again, they're plus two, and they have the lead over the Giants. I think it's a combination of those turnovers. I know Marion Campbell expressed that all week with this Falcon team. I think it's a combination of that plus getting Chris Miller back. I think, as I said earlier, that makes this a different team. We see he's 10 for 20 for 100 yards. Not great statistics, but he, haven't, he hasn't done anything wrong. No interceptions. Bill Sims has thrown two interceptions. Cooper and Gordon back deep. Jamie Dukes, however, one of the up men, got McFadden's low kickoff and brought it back 13 yards. Miller has held up.
so far his ankle. He missed those three weeks. Playing with that ankle left ankle heavily taped and in a brace. But so far he's escaped. One thing I don't see John is the presence of Lawrence Taylor in the Giants defensive setup. No, Ricky Shaw number 51 is playing Lawrence Taylor's position. And I don't think he came out of the uh, locker room at halftime. Miller on first down. Yeah. Ruey had a man open. Stacy Bailey stumbled just as he made his cut. I'll tell you, Stacy Bailey was wide open, and that's happening more and more to that giant defense. When they play that double coverage, Pat, and what happens is the corner is going to hit him. And the safety has to get over. Bailey gets by the corner, and the safety doesn't get over. Look at Kennard. He's saying to Perry Williams, where were you? It'll bring up second and ten. Word on Lawrence Taylor. We'll get to it in just a second. Second and ten. Complete intended for... Settle. Lawrence Taylor is the word we've just gotten is still in the locker room, taking an IV, getting some fluid back into his body. Whether or not he'll be back, they say as soon as that's done, he'll be back on the field, but whether or not he can play, we'll have to wait and see. If he comes back on the field, he'll play. Wide to the left. That was Hester on the move. Miller has to come up into the pocket. And Leonard Marshall takes him down. Well, that was the thing that the Giants needed. I know last, last week, you know, they had the big talk. Watch Leonard Marshall. He's playing in there as a defensive tackle over the guard. Gets a push on the guard, Scully, and then just gets right in front of Chris Miller as he tries to step up. So Rick Donnelly back to punt and Phil McConkey back deep for the Giants. Donnelly's kick end over end. McConkey signals fair catch, makes it. And the Giants will take over at their own 46 yard line. Next Sunday, it begins the NFL today. Bears go to New England, Rams at New Orleans, Atlanta at Philadelphia. And then Minnesota goes to San Francisco. And the Giants visit Detroit. Minnesota, we'll see them next week, John and I. At Candlestick, they're doing very well today against Tampa Bay. 28-10. They've been on a slump. Here's Joe Morris. Hit right away by Mike Reed as he tried to cut back. Gain of one. Giants felt they had to run the ball in order to be effective throwing. You know, Mike Reed is starting there for Marcus Cotton, yeah, who's been the, the starter at that outside linebacker. Reed's a second-year guy, and I'll tell you, he and Andre Bruce are doing a good job as the outside today stopping that run. Second and nine. Sims back to throw. Has a lot of time. Hits manual. First down. Bobby Butler made the stop. Bill Sims pass distribution. This is in the first half. Well, see, he's just three for eight. That's what he wanted to do is hit his wide receiver. In the first half, he's just three for eight, plus the two interceptions came to the wide receivers. Four for five to the running back. And then in the first half, the tight ends didn't catch a pass. So he wanted to hit the wide receivers. Only three times did he, plus he threw two interceptions. He gets to Morris. Stop for no gain by Rick Bryan and Joel Williams. Marion Campbell said basically the same thing. We've got to keep him off our quarterback. When John asked him what he felt they had to do to win the game, we have to protect the quarterback, and we've got to be able to run the ball. Bruce.
But a giant first down and a gain of 14. That's an interesting pass where you you take your tight end Zeke Moat and he runs a pattern and then you bring your fullback. Watch Moat's the tight end. He comes here and the fullback Carthon comes right in behind him. So they run off with him and boom they hit Carthon in there. Watch him. They start off. Carthon's coming right in behind Moat. He cuts underneath and catches the ball. Morris. To the 20. Pick up of two. Stopped again by Rick Bryan, number 77. See that Bryan's all over the field on the run. It's interesting that he lines up at the right defensive side. The Giants were running to the left defensive side. He got all the way across and got to Morris before he could make anything. That's us. That's the suit they call it down there in the pit. Second and eight. Otis Anderson and Lee Roussan now in the backfield. Swings right in motion. Then chased out of the pocket by Brian. Finally unload. And way out of bounds. Intended for Stephen Baker. Covered by Scott Case. Watch Sims, Pat. When he's going to throw to his left, he's going to drop straight back, straight out. See, back pedal. Looks to the left, looking to the left. Couldn't find anything there. So then he had to back up, buy a little more time. Come back right, then go back left, and by that time, there's no one open. He just threw the ball away. And here comes number 56, Lawrence Taylor, out of the locker room. Third and eight. Taylor left before the half. The first half was complete with cramps. And now he's just come back. And here's Sim. Falcon flips it and bat it away. Deflected Sims pass. I'll tell you one thing, Gann, we're going to see him. He's the second guy in there in the left. He just gets a pass rush, again, over the guard, just gets his hand up and knocks it down. I'll tell you, that's a, that, that was a pretty good surge there they had. They had, they had about seven red jerseys coming on Phil Sims. Including a safety man, Tim Gordon. From 37 yards, McFadden will try to get the Giants closer. Hostetler holding. Hostetler fell down. No one touched him. Yeah, but that reminds me of the of the play that remember happened earlier in the season, where you don't have a chance. Look, Hostetler is going to run an option. But the guy he's going to have to option it to is McFadden. The Falcons were waiting there. They had eight yards to go on that. Would be what see what happened to McFadden. When it comes to owner loyalty, every domestic and import car division takes a back seat to Ford. Because Ford owners in households all over America have proven their loyalty to Ford by buying another Ford. Today's Duracell batteries are built to last up to 30% longer than the ones we made a few years back. Guaranteeing a long, happy life. Today's Duracell lasts 30% longer. Surprise. Here's the tickets for your honeymoon. Oh, Dad, you shouldn't have. And we're going with you. Oh, you, oh, you shouldn't, shouldn't have. have. Northwest frequent flyers earn free trips fast, so you can give them away or go away or both. There's Jeff Hostetler, who just was the holder, who took off on a fake field goal. And the man he was going to pitch to, if he did, only wears one shoe. 
Well, the thing that surprised me about it is look at the down and distance. He had eight yards to go. He didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. And I knew he fell down, but there was no option of a pass. In other words, he was hostile where Orr McFadden was going to have to run nine yards to even get a first down. Settle and Freeman. The handoff is to Settle, and he gets a Falcon first down. Eleven yards, stopped by Harry Carson. Good play selection on fourth down. By the way, Lawrence Taylor is back in the game. The right linebacker. Into the line on this side. Settled. Good yardage again. Almost another first down. Stopped by Pepper Johnson. He gained nine. John Settle is fired up. You know, you talk about the Giants having a talk or something. It looked like someone had a talk with John Settle. I mean, he had a, a fine first half, but then he comes out here and he looks like the life of this party. You know, the coaches were saying that he's not a guy, he doesn't look good in practice. And you start putting him in a scrimmage, and the guy produces. You put him in a game, and he produces, and the coaches say, hey, maybe this guy can play in this place. Maybe. Yeah. Settle says he just takes time during the week to learn the plays before he turns it on. Second and one. Miller will put it up. Complete it is. The Dean Lang. Dropped by Lawrence Taylor. Dean of eight. Yeah, if we look at Miller's pass distribution here, we'll, we'll see again. He likes to get the ball more to the wide receivers. He threw 11 times, only completed four. That's where his timing was off a little. Five to ten to the running backs. And again, one for one for the tight end. So he's a quarterback who likes to spread the ball around and get it to his wide receivers, especially, especially Stacey Taylor. Settle and Lang now in the backfield. Mountain from the 47. They settle again. Pepper Johnson hanging on his back. But he got four. <laughs> Yeah, watch the right tackle here, number 69, Houston Hoover. I think he is an interesting guy. He's a rookie, too. He was a sixth-round draft choice. He's out at Jackson State. And every time I watch this guy, he blocks. I mean, he's a good pass protector. He's a tough guy, good run blocker. And these veteran offensive linemen love this guy. It'll bring up second and six. Hopkins at the 49-yard line. They're on. away from one rusher gets into giant territory to the 45 Leonard Marshall made the stop that time Houston Hoover who we're just talking about the right tackle up here in the top he has to block Lawrence Taylor watch him he really has good balance and good feet he has great big legs and hips and so on he's a big guy and he he really has a certain quickness about him because his name is Houston, his nickname is Dome. After the Astrodome. Houston Dome in Houston. Houston. Yeah. Third down. Settle is the lone setback. Out to the Giant 46. Miller gets to Settle. And Settle will have the first down. Picked up five. Stopped again by Pepper Johnson. He ran right in there again inside of Houston. Hoover and outside of Bill Fralick, the, the right guard. Those are two tough guys on this offensive line. I mean, that's one thing that this Falcon team has is a good offensive line. Bill Fralick, number 79, is a right guard. Houston Hoover, the right tackle. I mean, those guys can pass protect and run block very well. They're, they're two tough guys. Samuel and Primus are the two runners. Pitches back to Primus. Carson had a shot at about the line of scrimmage, but Primus got it time, turned up field, and Terry Kennard finally knocked him out of bounds after he picked up three. Oh, 
Yeah, we're talking about about Bill Frelick there, number 79, being a tough guy. Remember, we had him a couple of years ago on the All Mad team. In WrestleMania 2, he got in there and he was one of the last guys thrown out of the ring. He said his dad was a tough guy. His dad had a his dad was a big guy, like 6'3, 250, had a sign in his house. Don't worry about the dog, beware the owner. Reverse coming to Dixon. The blockers in front, and Dixon stays behind him. Another Atlanta first down before Kenny Hill makes the stop. Yeah, this Atlanta team has really done a fine job of, of keeping the defense off balance. You watch here, they, they start off to the right, and then they're going to bring the, you see they start off in motion. Now the motion man is going to stop, then he's going to come back on a reverse. But they've really kept them off balance. They've, they've run the reverse, they've run right, they've run left, they've run play passes. Done a real good job on offense. Good block by George Yarno. Here's Settle. He's close to the 25. Pickup of three. Carson and Taylor made the stop. George Yarno is the backup center for the Falcons. Wayne Radloff has a, a bad knee. They didn't know how much he was going to be able to go today. So Yarno, nine-year veteran, uh, you know, you like that type of thing in a backup center where you bring in a guy and the guy has played in this league and you don't have to worry about the snap and the calls and all those types of things. He spent most of his years with Tampa Bay. He had a brother in the league, too, that was a uh, was Seattle Seahawks. Nixon was the man in motion. Pitches back to Settle. And Settle whirls down to about the 20. Gain of six. He settles one of those guys who is really just a football player. Yep. You know, that. He said when he went to Appalachian State that they weren't very good, and he wanted to go there and make them good. And he said he came to Atlanta, and he said they weren't very good. I'd like to make them good. Those are pretty lofty goals for a guy who wasn't I'll even say. drafted. Well, and when he went to the Combine scouting meeting in New Orleans, he had the flu. And his time in the 40 was not acceptable for a running back in the NFL. And then after he got well, Cleveland and Miami tried him out again, and his time was down to 4 5. Yeah, it was 4 7 5, and the scouts thought that he was really too small to be a fullback and too slow to be a halfback. But that 4 7 5, again, really wasn't the legitimate time, and the Falcons say that he's a 4 5 guy. Which is all academic anyway. You know, if right. you can play, you can play. If you can't, you can't. Third and short. And off. To settle, and he didn't get it. Harry Carson stopped him short. Now, do you go? Here comes the field goal unit. I'll tell you, Harry Carson's going to shoot the gap right up the middle. Watch him. He read that thing all the way. There was a hole open for him, and he got settled before he could get back to the line of scrimmage. That was a great read by Harry Carson. So the field goal unit comes on. Chris Miller holds for Greg Davis. 37 yards. move in front now by 10 with 4 13 left to play in the third period. The Ford Mustang LX convertible. With its impressive list of standard features, it's just what the doctor ordered. Open up and say ah. At UPS, we're changing the face of the international delivery business. 
Because now, UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. And let's face it, a drachma saved is a drachma earned. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. If you haven't seen what Zenith's been doing lately... Monday. Oh, no, it can't be. New Heart. Falcons took it 60 yards in 12 plays, kept it 649, and Davis hit a 37-yard field goal. Collins at the four. Flag on the play. Stopped by Evan Cooper. I tell you, this Atlanta team is fired up, and the, and the fans here are fired up. It seems like, to me, the crowd has grown as this game has yeah. gone on. I think people were listening on the radio and heard, what, the Falcons are winning? Let me get down there. Number 28 on the run back. First down. That'll take them back to the 10 next Saturday on CBS Sports. College football, undefeated West Virginia, hosts Penn State. The Mountaineers are 7-0. And heading to a major bowl, perhaps. But first, they have to beat Penn State. That's next Saturday here on CBS. First and ten Giants, Morris and Carthon. Sims is going to work on first down. Pass is caught. Stephen Baker. Another good catch and another one of those comebackers. 14 yards. Well, that was their original plan. They were going to work Stephen Baker on that left side against Scott Case. Remember the first time they tried it, uh, Case intercepted the ball, and they haven't gotten a lot of work back on that Scott Case like they had planned to. That'll discourage you a little bit. Bill Morris. Carthorne behind Sam. Make to Mark. The Baker again. 13-yard gain. Bobby Butler was the defender this time. You know, the interesting thing, the Giants, or Bill Sims thought the weakness of the Falcon defense was the area on the field outside of the numbers. So whether it be right or left, if you look from the numbers that are on the field out to the sideline, that's the areas that Sims is trying to hit. He fakes, and Baker did a stop and go, and there's a flag on the play. As he did the go on Case, Case grabbed him. That's what you have to do, because Case doesn't know whether or not that safety is going to get in there behind him. Ah, he went for the stop, but used the hand on the go. <laughs> Illegal contact foul. Number 25, defense, automatic first down. So the Giants will move into Falcon territory. Scott Case, the target in the game plan. Well, he's been playing five years, and he knows that you, if you really take a big bite on a fake, you better get your hand up and not let him score. And again on a play fake. time and it's complete. Bobby Butler fell down. You know, here's the interesting thing. You see the numbers there, Pat? Right there's the 50 and the 40. In that number from there where Miller, uh, uh, a Lionel Manuel cuts to the sideline, you see that's the area that they don't figure is the strength of this defense. So in that area is where they think they can hit their passes. 
official timeout. I'm not sure why. It could be looking at the catch to make sure that that right foot gets down. Could be. I don't know that. You know, I don't know if you could put any paper under that right foot or not. The left one was definitely down. Lionel Manuel is trying to slide the right foot. Now watch. He has to have the ball first. Now he has the ball. Okay, the left foot definitely hits. But does that right foot, as he slides it by, does that ever hit the ground? Tough to tell. Replay officials. George Slatke is the replay official in the boot. You know, it always After gets me. Review, the play stands. First down. Play stands. First down. And that's at the Falcon 37 yard line. Good throw by Phil Sin. Boat down at about the 10. He was being covered by Joel Williams. Great throw by Sims. He's going to come off a of bootleg here. You see, thanks to the halfback coming across, bootlegs out to this side. Wasn't going to Boat first. He was trying to hit the outside receiver out there. Waited until Boat got in that area between the numbers and the sideline and hit him. That was the first pass he's completed to a tight end today. First and goal from the 10 for the Giants. Morris straight ahead uh, in just inside the five. Tripped up by Robert Moore. Bill Word. Sims is motioning to the bench the formation he wants. Word on Stacy Bailey from the Falcons is that he has a bruised shoulder and he may not return. That'll hurt. Hey, one thing for the Giants now, the last two times they got down here, they shot themselves in the foot. And I think this is where they have to get this one in for no other reason other than just confidence in this football team. Second and goal from the five. And Jamar. Forced out of bounds by Moore after only about a yard. Falcons do a good job. Robert Moore and Andre Bruce is stringing this thing out because he looks like he has pretty good blocking here. But you see Moore 34. Just keep the outside. Keep the outside. Keep the outside. Don't let him get outside. Then if he can cut back, you got all the guys coming down the line of scrimmage. If he has to keep going out, you'll run him right out of bounds. Third and goal from just outside the three. Sims is going to put it up. No, he's not. Andre Bruce on a sack. That's the second time he's been down. Andre Bruce was the number one player picked in the draft this year. The first player in the entire draft. He really hadn't played that way all year. They had expected him to be a big pass rusher. He hadn't been. Here in Campbell Field, he just has to get a feel of this game. We have to play with him. We have to live with him, and he'll get better. That was a big, big play. If you're saving him, you might as well save it for that position. McFadden from 27 yards right down the middle. Uh, it's 13 to 6 now with 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Falcons lead it. If you thought you had to give up comfort to get a close shave, Norelco says, think again. Their revolutionary shaving system shaves skin close in a way that's incredibly comfortable. As the hair enters the chamber, the patented lift and cut system lifts each hair and holds it a split second before a blade cuts it, so it's possible to shave skin close without the blades even touching the skin. The lift and cut shaving system from Norelco. We made close comfortable. What do you think of the Ford Festiva? It's big. It's small. Sort of a big, small 
cutest little thing. Festiva gives you features like a roomy interior, 660 powertrain warranty, sometimes even your own parking space. So it's big and small. How about Festiva's price? It's small. Small? It's nothing. Ford Festiva. Call it big. Call it small. Call it yours for only $56.99. Have you driven a Ford lately? Xerox presents the Great American Torture Test. Alaska. Xerox. Death Valley. Xerox. City traffic. Xerox. Coast to coast, to prove under the most extreme conditions, you can't buy a better antifreeze coolant than Xerox. No matter where you drive. The punishing defense of the Vikings. Can it stop the unstoppable Roger Craig and the 49ers? Next Sunday on CBS Sports. 13-6 now. With the third quarter coming to a close, the Falcons lead the Giants. Cooper and Gordon back deep for McFadden's kickoff. It's Evan Cooper inside the five. And outside the 25, finally stopped by Adrian White. Now with 40 seconds remaining, third quarter. Falcons by a touchdown. All across America, companies are declaring liberty for all. A revolutionary idea from Liberty Mutual Insurance, where employees can now save on all their auto, home, and life insurance through the convenience of payroll deductions. Liberty for all. It's freedom from bills and paperwork, and it can save you money. America When you move with Ryder, think of the unpacking as practice. Because only Ryder will enroll you in one of the country's biggest discount shopping services, absolutely free. Which means you can buy almost anything for your new home at some of the best prices around. So after you unpack, you can unwind. Move yourself with Ryder and settle in with the savings. Ryder, we're there at every turn. The new Remington Electroblade vibrating blade system has been an amazing success for those who prefer shaving with a blade. Electroblade's vibrating twin blades glide so easily you'll get the closest, smoothest blade shave you've ever imagined or your money back. I had to try this to believe it. Denerex tingles. Tells me it's doing more. Selsun Blue, no tingle. Both Denerex and regular Selsun Blue have dandruff medicine, but Denerex has an extra anti-itch medicine. So long, Selsun Blue. Hello, Denerex. Forty seconds remain, third quarter. Atlanta 13, the Giants 6. We're at Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Pat Summerall and John Madden. Stacy Bailey did not return. Haynes is in it as a wide receiver. Michael Haynes, that he could fly. Well, he could fly so much that he, he made the trials for our U.S. Olympic team. He got beat in the trials, but that's what sent him to football. You know, he was fast from northern Arizona. And then you get in those trials and you're running against world-class guys. Went right to this game. Number 81. They say he's tough as well as being fast. Miller. Chase out of the pocket. Gets it to Gene Lang. Lang finally chased out of bounds at midfield by Mark Collins. It helps to be mobile. That's the thing, and Miller bought that time. He just came out the outside. He was really trying to go to Mike Haynes deep. I'll tell you what I like about this guy is, is he's, he's a competitor. You know, in high school, he was a baseball player, he was a football player, drafted in baseball, played professional baseball. In fact, Marion Campbell said, the guy's just a gym rat. I mean, he's a golfer, darn near a scratch golfer, and any game that he plays, he plays well. 
which means to me that the guy is a competitor, and that's the number one thing you have to be. Wisdom is the man in motion. This is Lang again. Straight ahead for five yard pickup. Stopped by Carson. Lock ticking down and third quarter will expire before they get another one off. Started into that mid quarter stroll. End of quarter stroll, I should say. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Atlanta 13, the Giants 6. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is CBS. I'd buy out my company and have my boss work for me. I'd learn to speak Italian, like Ferrari, Jacuzzi, Armani. I would shop until I dropped. I'd party. This Wednesday, someone could win millions of dollars. I'd buy a baseball team for Brooklyn. New York Lotto. All you need is a dollar and a dream. This man is going to Tokyo and Osaka on serious business, and some of the best people in his field are going along. They're participating in an important exhibition, so their reservations, flight time, ground transportation, equipment, everything's got to go right. That's why they went with the airline that has a proven track record in the Pacific. Which airline did the U.S. college all-star teams choose when they played this year's Japan Bowl? Japan Airlines, comfortably ahead worldwide. No matter where you drive, all the tire between you and the road is this, about the width of your finger. Here's where you need exclusive Bridgestone technology. Every Bridgestone tire is performance engineered from the ground up, which means Bridgestone builds more than tires that perform. Bridgestone builds confidence. So at 65 miles an hour, remember this and remember Bridgestone. Today's game is sponsored locally in part by your tri-state Pontiac dealers. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Jeep. There's a feeling you can get only in a Jeep. The good time, great taste of McDonald's. And by Coors Light, there's no slowing down with a silver bullet. It's the right beer now. Ready to go in quarter number four, the final. Giants against the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta came in at one and six. The Giants were four and three. Second and five. Settle and Freeman. Wisenhunt was the man in motion. This is Settle. Settle will have good yardage. Ten yards, in fact. John Washington and Kenny Hill made the stop. You know, one thing I'll tell you. Let's watch Lawrence Taylor here. He and Carl Banks are not playing the way Taylor and Banks normally play. Watch his decision here. Thinking that a guy thinks it's fast. Okay, he starts going back, gets bumped out of there, flop down like that, miss a tackle. I don't know what's wrong, but that, believe me, is not Lawrence Taylor. Then the guy on the other side, Carl Banks, he's made like one tackle all day. So the guys who are really supposed to be the stalwart aren't today. Giant 35. Give is to James Primus. Picked up three. Harry Carson stopped it. You know, this giant defense really isn't what it once was. And I think that giant defense has always been a great Lawrence Taylor and a bunch of other guys who would rise to, to that level. Marion Campbell was saying yesterday, John, that he thought maybe people are just getting used to this giant defense. They've seen it so much. They've heard so much about it. Do you think there's anything to that? No, I don't think so. I think the players that were dominant players aren't dominating now. On second down, Miller is going to throw a screen pass to Lang. And he's got a first down. Who is hammered out of bounds by Kenny Hill. But got 11 yards nevertheless. You know, Mike Kent 
Watch him. He's up there at top of the screen. Number 78, Block and Taylor. He is really, as I said before, a picture-perfect pass protector. And he's been there in that position all the time. Playing. I had some doubts about whether he'd get up after that hit. But he did. First in Canada, Atlanta from the Giant 21. Miller and yet and you have to like yesterday when we met with him we finished and he brought in his mother and father they're from Eugene Oregon and it was his father's birthday so Chris Miller flew his parents in for for their birthday and of course that coincides with his first game back but that has to be confident when you when you're coming back he's got the bad ankle and you bring the mom and dad in to watch it gotta believe second 11 Miller back to throw it away. Threw it left-handed. We were talking about what an athlete he is. He was chased by John Washington. Hey, this is what a gym rat does. This is what Sonny Jurgensen would do. Remember that? You start with a right, and you can't throw it with that right hand. You feel the pressure coming. Switch it to your left. The same hand. You got a bad ankle. I'm throw with that one. What the heck? Jurgy would have thrown it behind his back. With his left hand. Right. Third down. Falcons will have to put it up. Gaines split wide left. Hester and Dixon to the right. Here comes the blitz. That's got to be interfered. Intended for Haynes. Harry Williams and he hit him 30 minutes before the ball got there. The Giants are trying to get offensive pass interference out of it. I don't know how. The only thing I think they can do is that the ball hit Perry Williams right in the face. Pass interference, number 23, defense, automatic first down. That's the only thing I think they can ask for because it was all over. Watch him. Here comes a blitz. Boom. He has to get rid of the ball. Here's Perry Williams. Here's the end. Here's where the penalty happened. And there's where the ball hit. See the blitz coming from the outside. They don't pick it up. Miller has to get rid of it. Up on top, you see Perry Williams doesn't let the receiver in. It wasn't holding. It was just that he saw he was going to run an in pattern. Perry Williams jumped in front of him. The bad thing is the ball was in the air. And he also knew that he had no safety man on the inside because he was blitzing. And then that's when you take the inside position, but you can't take it when the guy's coming in there and the ball's in the air and you knock him off. First down. The game clock should be set at 12.21. 1221 on the game clock, please. Game clock says 1201. Thank you. And now they just changed it at the request of Jerry Markbright to 1221. So all is ready to operate now. That was Bob Beeks, the line judge, who saw that, who keeps the time down in the field. He saw that it wasn't right. He was the official telling Jerry Markbright that that thing's not right up there. First. Lead at 13-6. That was Wisenhut in motion. Miller, that could be out of the end zone. Tended for Haynes. Miller threw that one like the field was 120 yards long. <laughs> because he had him, he had Haynes, and he led Haynes, but he had to lead him right up into the third uh, third deck of the stadium, or the third row. That's Hugh Millen, the backup quarterback for the Falcons, who signals in the plays to Chris Miller. The coach standing right next to him was Rod Dauhauer. He of the Indianapolis Colts. St. Louis Cardinal. Second and ten. And Burt gets a rest. 
Eric Howard to the bench. Here's Settle. Only got a couple. Stopped by Eric Dorsey. One thing about Miller, I was talking to Bill Jobko, who is the Falcons' director of pro personnel yesterday at practice. And he said he's got a good arm, not a great arm, not a big arm, is what he said, but he has great vision. He reads the defenses very well and sees so much. I would think if you can shoot uh, 75 at Augusta, and he said he would have shot 72, but his caddy threw him off a couple times. Gave him the wrong club. I think you have to have good vision or something. Have to be an athlete, obviously. And some of those pros, I know they don't do that well there. Back to throw. Almost to Floyd Dixon. A little bit high. Hey, the Falcons haven't had a lot of success in that uh, shotgun and in that four wide receiver thing. That was the closest Miller has come though. He had he had Floyd Dixon down there. I think he was the most upset guy after he didn't catch it. He saw him down there and said, whoa, I got that. He's only completed one pass all day out of the shotgun. I think that was as close as he's come other than the one completion. Greg Davis inside 40 has been perfect. This is from 31. Fifteen left in this contest. It's the Falcons sixteen, Giants six. Jeep Cherokee is now exclusively available with four-wheel anti-lock brakes. This exclusive anti-lock braking system automatically reacts to any road surface condition. So in the event of a sudden stop, the response is controlled and immediate to all four wheels. A valuable option. But since Cherokee is a Jeep, it's not your only option. Save up to $1,600 on select 1989 Jeep Cherokees. Oktoberfest can be very boring. You know, um pa pa. Now! Let's go to like Rocktoberfest! 31 days of rock and roll, parties and course lights, the silver bullets, the beer that won't throw you down. Plus, there's posters of me and the guys at your store. <laughs> October will never be boring again. Boom, pop, pop. <laughs> Here comes today's Duracell battery, and here's yesterday's. Today's are built to last up to 30% longer than the ones we made just a few years back. So you'll be guaranteed a long, happy life. Look for the new Duracell. C&D 4-Packs. Atlanta leads by 10, 16 to 6 in the fourth quarter. With 11 15 remaining to play. Things could get even tighter in the NFC East if this continues. Ugamos and Mark Collin. Deep this is Ugamos right at the goal line. Hit at the 20. To summarize what's happened so far, the Giants have been inside the 20-yard line three times, came away with two field goals. John Settle has 116 total yards, one touchdown. That's running and passing, and Greg Davis has three field goals. You have to be impressed by the way the Falcons have played. Well, you know what I'm impressed with? This, this second half, they've come out and they control the ball. You know, their time of possession, uh, they've had a couple big drives. The time of possession is much more than the Giants. And that last three points doesn't look like a lot, but now the Giants need two scores. Sims got the screen pass to Morris. He is tripped up by Joel Williams. There's a name we've mentioned a lot today, Joel Williams. No yeah. wonder he came back. Well, he was saying that when he first came in the league that he thought he'd play four years, get a pension, be happy. Now he's played 10 years, 
<laughs> I just want to keep going. I don't want to ever have to get out of this game. Second and six. And oh. finally, I thought Boat caught it. And now they're saying he did. Maurice Cawthon batted it up in the air. And Moat gets the rebound. You know, that used to not be a legal play. It is now. It used to be if one man on your team hit it, then another man couldn't catch it. But now they've changed the rules. Now that's legal that you can do that. But I think they're looking at it to see if, in fact, Moat did catch it. Was sort of hidden when he hit the ground, sort of under his under his body. You couldn't tell really if he had possession or not. And I'm sure that's what they're looking at. Yeah, I say. remember one time they looked at this in Pittsburgh, the Oakland Raiders. They called <laughs> it the immaculate reception. They looked that's for I think a half hour. Stands. First down. They didn't have this instant replay no. stuff then. Franco Harris caught that one. I'll never forget that one as long as I live. So help me. That's one of the reasons I suppose you're up here. Get him on the sideline. That's right. And happy to be up here. Here's Sam. Plenty of time. Intercepted. Brett Clark with the interception. And he pulled a hamstring or hurt his ankle. I'm not sure what. Penalty marker down on the play. Penalty marker is right there on the 10 yard line, right where the ball was intercepted. I bet that's going to be pass interference against the Falcons. And that's a big one. That's about a 50 yard penalty. You know, Phil Sims was just trying to throw that thing away, I think. Well, now the Falcon offensive the unit is headed for the field. Number 28 on the return. First down, timeout. How can 28 have the illegal block? He's the guy that has the ball. That's 20. Case. With the, it's 25 with the illegal block. Yeah, and 28's carrying the ball. The poor guy got a hamstring and interception. They say the penalty's on him. That's hard to, uh, hard to understand. When the clock strikes half past six, babe, time to hit for I'm like his worst nightmare. I keep coming back to win again and again. The WBC champion, Canada's golden boy, Donnie Lalonde. After this fight, he won't want to come back again. The motivation, not one, but two world championship belts in one night. November 7th, Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Leonard versus Lalonde in a full tilt battle for all the gold. Brought to you by Coors Extra Gold Draft. Jeep Cherokee has available four-wheel anti-lock brakes. The most powerful engine in its class. Full-time four-wheel drive capability. And room for five. Being superior in these areas makes Cherokee superior in these areas. <laughs> Save up to $1,600 on select 1989 Jeep Cherokee. The perennial beast of the East, Penn State, takes on the newfound power of Major Harris and sixth-ranked West Virginia next Saturday on CBS Sports. Watch this, Pat. Here's Stephen Baker. That's the ball is for him. Scott Case is defending. Here's the interceptor, Brett Clark, here. But watch the hit that Case, number 25, puts on Baker. That's the penalty right there. Then watch Brett Clark. He looks like he pulls something right here as he goes to stretch out. He just has to walk it out of bounds. So the Falcons take over deep in their own territory at their own five-yard line. Where's it not in motion? Dean Wang, the ball carrier, and not much there. The defense led by Harry Carson Wang got one yard. Funny in this game, we can talk about the stats and you have possession and runs and passes and defense and things. 
but the biggest one has to be turnovers. You know, and if you look at this game and you say, why are the Giants losing? Well, you can point to two things. One, they aren't playing very well, but two, they have three turnovers and the Falcons have none. Barry and Campbell talked for at least 10 minutes about that yesterday. He said you can take the rest of those statistics and do what you want. It's turnovers. That's settled. Stopped by Taylor. A gain of three. You know, it's also field position. I think this is a big down for the the Falcons, a big down for the Giant defense, because if they don't get a first down here, the Giants should come out of this with good field position and have an opportunity to get one of those scores back that they need. Third and five. If you're coaching, do you put it up here? Uh, I would put it up here, but I'd put it up safely. Settle is the lone setback. Miller. Dives and might have gotten enough for the first down. A pickup of six. Big play there. And it would have been a bigger play if Stacy Bailey didn't have a bad shoulder and could help him block. He needed something out there. Watch Bailey. He comes here. He can't get the block for him. He has a bad shoulder. Watch, he's the outside guy. He shouldn't even be in there. Now watch, as Miller comes out here, watch right here. If Bailey could get him a block, he would definitely have the first down. Bailey goes off the sideline, and Miller still gets the first down. With that dive, he got him out of the hole. Stacy Bailey's left shoulder is really hurting. He can't even, he can't even lift that arm. I'm amazed he's playing. Well, what happened, is they want to get in this four wide receiver formation and they only have four wide receivers so I think they're putting them in there just to show them the formation but as you see there he could not take a hit on that shoulder Miller to the center. Giants settle him quickly no gain Carson and Reason you know as you look at Miller's passing by distance We'll see 10 of 18 under 10 yards. You know, that's that control stuff. Three of five between 10 to 20 yards. Then 21 to 30 is 0 for 3, 0 for 2, over 30 and 40. So really, he hasn't completed a pass over 20 yards, but he's been pretty effective in that 20 yard box. A lot of hopers. Story of my life. <laughs> Gets it outside to settle. The ball is on the way before he ever turned to look at it. Loss of two. Reasons made the stop. Let's watch again Lawrence Taylor here, Ray. I said earlier that Lawrence Taylor today is not the Lawrence Taylor that we've been used to looking at over the years, although that Mike Ken is a very, very good player. But Lawrence Taylor and Carl Banks are not the dominant players that we've known them to be. It's been a long day for that guy today. Bailey split wide to the right. Hester moves in motion. From the shotgun, here comes the giant safety blitz again. But a flag on the play. Tom Flynn was the giant blitzer. Full start. Number 69, offense, third down. Houston Hoover. Well, of course, you get that third down pass. They know you're passing. you got to pass. They, they're up there in the blitz, and everyone gets a little shaky in that situation, especially a rookie from Yazoo City, Mississippi. You remember a few years ago, people thought when the Dallas Cowboys had to wear their blue jerseys, they were jinxed. This yes. is the first time this year that the Giants have worn white. They like the blue jerseys. Well, you think they're playing this bad because they got white jerseys on? I don't know. Something to talk about. I don't know. I don't think they got a wake-up call, this group, today. Like I said, I think, you know, when they had that group where they played Detroit twice and Atlanta once during that period, now, if they don't win all three of these, uh, I don't, I don't know that they're a playoff team anyway. And I hate to wipe anyone out or, you know, wash them out at this point, but 
I think that, that if they were going to get get fast, they had to get fat here in this part of the schedule. Well, they've got five minutes and 52 seconds to do something. Ourselves talking with the officials. And this is a pretty good situation here. You got them backed up. You got them third and real long. I would say that the Falcons aren't going to take any chances here. And the Giants, again, should get pretty good field position. Well, third and this long, I certainly wouldn't take any chances. Ball's at the eight-yard line. Clock is running. Miller didn't like what he saw, called a timeout. So they ran some time off the clock. 5.36 remaining. And Atlanta leads by 10. Working to be the best they can be. <laughs> Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. And for Dixon and Frank Minifield to find the position of cornerback. The ability of this pair to prevent the opposition from penetrating the end zone is legendary. Among their peers, they're acknowledged as two of the best government in the league. Two straight Pro Bowl starts is testimony to the respect Frank Minifield and Hanford Dixon generate. Recognition that is a result of the drive and talent that make Minifield and Dixon the best they can be. Let's go, McManus! A couple times I wondered, why'd you get yourself into McManus? <laughs> came together. There's no telling what you can do. Okay, McManus. Go. Especially when you have somebody who really believes you can do it. Be all that you can be in an edge of life in the Army. On our way back to the stadium, I'm Brent Musburger in New York with a reminder that next Saturday our college football coverage continues from Morgantown, West Virginia. The unbeaten Mountaineers, Joe Paterno, hopes to salvage a disappointing season by knocking off unbeaten West Virginia. The Mountaineers are dreaming of a national championship now behind their talented sophomore quarterback, Major Harris. Yesterday, he threw for three, ran for two more. It's a 2.30 Easter. Now, let's send you back to the stadium. Bill Parcells very upset about something. I think it has to do with the clock. I would think so. You know, whether or not uh, uh, Chris Miller could take time out at that time or how much time went off the clock or when the clock starts again. In any case, it's third and 18 from the eighth. Look at that time of possession. I mean, that's the turnovers are the big thing, but this is the big thing, too, because they didn't have to let Phil Sims have a shot at their defense if their offense is in there. Miller's going to throw it. He got out of the end zone. And he gets out to the 12. Reasons. After Miller went down. Picked up five, got a little bit of room for his punter, Rick Donnelly. Now, if I were the Giants and I need two scores to win the game, I think I would I would come on a punt block here. Because if you can get a punt block down here, that's a touchdown. They don't look like they're going to try to put pressure on it. They have two men out on each of the two wideouts for Atlanta. It was close, though. McConkey. McConkey gets to the Falcon 44. So the Giants will take over in good shape. Settle was down to make the stop. Next Sunday, doubleheader on CBS. Bears, New England. The Rams go to New Orleans. Saints winning again today. Atlanta visits Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Minnesota at Candlestick Park against San Francisco where John Madden and I will be and the Giants again face Detroit Minnesota on the roll again Sims from the shotgun outside knocked down at the last second by Bobby Butler Lionel Emanuel the intended receiver Miscues for the Giants today. Three turnovers. One fake field goal that failed. 
three possessions inside the 20. And they only got two field goals. And I think you can add a lot of missed tackles to that in the defense that uh, looked loggy all day. Second and 10. Sam pass is caught by Manuel this time, and that'll be enough for a first down. Four and a half minutes left. Robert Moore made the stop. Giants quickly up, no huddle. come up with some big plays today. They've had the turnovers we talked about. Andre Bruce got a big uh, a sack for him, and now they come off this group where they had two sacks, one by Cotton and that last one by Tim Green. Both teams have two timeouts remaining, Marcells and Sims in conference. I'll tell you, the, the Giants started just... Uh, a minute ago, they were first to 10 inside the 30. Now they're back out 45 yard line. Third and 28. Hey, there's no coach in the NFL ever wants to make that call. What do you call on third and 28? Give me a play that'll go 30 yards. I don't have one. There are none. Then back to throw. He's going to take off. And now slide. He gets back to about the original line of scrimmage, a pickup of 17, stopped by Butler. I think the Giants have to kick a field goal now, 10 points down. They have to do that. Then the next time they get the ball, go for the uh, touchdown. They probably wish the last time they were in the situation they would have kicked the field goal. McFadden will try from 45 yards. Far enough. And he hit it. 16-9. 3.25 left to play. This will be an interesting situation, Pat. Down seven. I don't think the onside kick here. Now, Marion Campbell will have to put an onside kick prevent team out there to prevent against the onside kick. But I would doubt if Bill Parcells would do it. Not with this much time remaining. No, he's talking to his defensive coordinator there. I think what they're probably talking about is let's not go for the onside. Let's get him in the hole and see if we can finally get our defense to wake up and put some pressure on these guys. And maybe get a turnover. A touchdown to tie. Well, you know, the interesting thing is I said that the Falcons would be in an onside prevent, and they aren't. So if they don't get an onside prevent, this really isn't a bad time to take a shot. Well, they've got a couple of receiver types up front, but the Giants kick it away. Evan Cooper. Oh. As he nailed, the ball came flying out of there. Adrian White really put a nail on Evan Cooper. I can hear it all the way up here, but there's a flag back where they kicked from. And they'll ask him to do it again. You know, that Adrian White is a is a tough guy. Offside, number 48, kicking team, re-kick. Watch number 36, 
of the Giants is going to be right there. He comes, he hits him across the bow, knocks the ball out of bounds, knocked everything a flying on that play. You know, Adrian White wants to be a boxer. You know that? He wants yeah. to, he trains, and he's trained in a gym, and next year he wants to fight in the New York Golden Gloves. And when a guy can come down the field like that and bring a load like he does, I don't think I would bet against him as a uh, as a Golden Glover. Got an explosion. <laughs> Boy, that was really a hit. That's all he'd have to do in those Golden Gloves is have the bell ring, jump off your stool, and go over and hit him like you did on that play. Pittsburgh beating up on Denver. The Bills have come back to tie New England. off again. It's going to be Cooper again. Didn't quite step out of bounds. This time he didn't get hit quite as hard. Tom Flynn made the stop. But the Falcons got themselves out of a bit of a hole with that 18 yard return by Cooper. I'll tell you, as Cooper was coming up the sideline that time, I'll guarantee you he had a left eye out peeking for that number 36. Chris Miller. The statistics won't show it, but he has lifted this entire Atlanta team. Well, he's lifted the crowd, too. I mean, the people are kind of into this game. We saw him against the Rams, and we saw him you know, against other people last week against Denver. They look like a lethargic nothing team, but he comes back, and they're a totally different group. Here's Gene Wang on first down. Now three minutes remain. Carl Banks made the stop. Timeout, Giants. That'll leave them with one. And that could be precious. Well, they only have one timeout, and of course they'll get a timeout at the two-minute warning, so that gives them two. And I'm sure Bill Parcells is thinking that we're going to stop them, so we'll get a third timeout on the punt and the change of possession. Marion Campbell. He has remained the same through all the years. He has been in the NFL. That's Claude Humphrey, the great pass rusher who played here for so many years next to him there. I'll tell you, Claude Humphrey was really something as a pass rusher. You ought to see the hands that guy got. I mean, look at those hands on him. He has a, a ring on there. It could be a bracelet for some people. But you wonder where Claude Humphrey got to be such a great pass rusher. A big part of it came out of those hands. Of course, he was a little trimmer when he was a, little a pass bit. rusher now. He's... Uh, uh, <laughs> had to put on a few there. His hands looks like he's wearing a baseball glove all the time. Hand off to Freeman. Not to settle this time. He's hit by Eric Dorsey and Carl Banks. You see that little thing there when, when Settle hit in there to Dorsey? Dorsey's a 280-pound guy. When Settle hit him, Dorsey went backwards. Giants have taken their last time out. Just watch the end of the run. There's Dorsey there, 77, coming off a block. Now watch when he comes off the block and Settle hits him. He's spinning there, but watch that. I mean, Dorsey goes backwards, Settle by that hit. It's just a little thing, a subtle thing about Settle. He gained a yard there. 2.54 left. The timeouts remaining, two for Atlanta. None for the Giants. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Atlanta Falcons and the National Football League is prohibited. Brings up third and three. Ball is at the Falcons 32. 254 remaining. Settled is the lone setback behind Chris Miller. Everybody up. And the pass is picked off by Harry Carter. They put the pressure on Miller. Someone hit his arm just as he let it go. Was the play the giant defense hasn't been doing anything and they finally come up with a play here 
Watch it. It's not even from his backside. It's going to be Carl Banks right there, 58 from his front side. Just Miller's trying to get rid of the ball. Just as he does, boom, Banks hits it, and the ball pops up. And so the Giants will take over at the Atlanta 31. The Banks has been silent all day. I guess if you're going to come up with a play, you, this is a, as good a time as any. They have no timeouts, keep in mind. Sims up under the center, not in the shotgun. He hands off to Morris. Morris struggles down to about the 24 before he's tripped up by Mike Gann, but he got eight yards. Clock running. I think the Giants are thinking now here that they'll go for a tie. Now, if you're going for a tie, if you don't think you have to get two scores, then you can take your time. Because if you're going for the tie, get the tie. Don't let them have any time to get the ball back. Second and two. Sims back to throw it. Fires complete. But a flag on the play. Stephen Baker. They're down inside the five. Pick up of 21, but a penalty marker down. Yeah, that's one area that the Giants have really had success, and that was, again, that area between the numbers on the field and the sideline. They made most of their passing yardage in those areas. It's against Atlanta. Holding number 23 defense. Penalty decline. First down. First down. Butler was caught holding, and there's no question about it. Right up there on top. That's the, that's the second one of those Butlers had. Again, it's tough when you're out there in the corner. You're out there on an island all by yourself. Sometimes you have to do things like that. That'll make it first and goal from the three. Arthon in front of Morris. Pitches back to Morris. Not quite. Joel Williams. Two-minute warning now. The Giants at the one. Trying to tie it. 16-9 Atlanta leads. One hundred seventy seven horses give Comanche so much power, but it's the name Jeep. Second and goal from that spot. Matt Summerall, John Madden. It looked as if the Falcons had won their second game, but the Giants pressured Chris Miller. And Harry Carson, after a hit by Banks, came up with the interception. Anderson is the deep back. Anderson is in the end zone. Touchdown. Hey, a lot of fans here are cheering for that. I, I thought this crowd was pretty excited, but maybe half of it's giant fans. I wonder where all these people came from. 
I think they're just hoping for overtime. Oh yeah, they're going to get an overtime. Hostetler will hold. Madden will check. That when Carl Banks hit Chris Miller, you can smell overtime right then. A touchdown. High formation. Again, everyone down in the pits, everyone trying to stay low. Otis Anderson just getting up and over. This is where Carthon is good. Morris Carthon, number 44. Yeah, he's one of the best lead blockers on those yep. type of plays in football. But if anyone can do anything, you know, better than other people, this is a thing number 44 does right there. He's just picking off that guy who's going to be the first guy and keeping him down so that Anderson can get over. Remember John Robinson, the Ram coach, saying to us what a tough job that is. Not just blocking, not just the mechanics, but picking out the right guy to block. Yeah, yeah, being able to find the guy and then do the job. And then also to find a running back today that is happy to be a blocker and does it with pride. You know, I mean, don't want to run the ball. You know, we're probably a little premature in the mouth of the way. They've still got two timeouts left. And two minutes left. Evan Cooper. Again, he is hit hard by Adrian White. Tonight on CBS, it's 60 minutes with three brand new stories and Andy Rooney. That's followed by the season premiere of Murder, she wrote, starring Angela Lansbury. Then it's the conclusion of the CBS miniseries, Jack the Ripper. That's all tonight on CBS. Jack the Ripper starring Michael Caine and Jane Seymour. First and 10, Atlanta at their own 20. Hugh Millen is the quarterback now. Flag on the play. We'll see if we can find out if something is wrong with Chris Miller. The word is that in the follow through, he hit his elbow on a helmet. That's why we're looking at Hugh Millen now. And they're down here. You can see Chris Miller's down on the sideline, and they're checking that elbow, and it's. Again, his right elbow, that's the one you're worried about. He's coming off an injury to his, his, left, uh, his left ankle. And it looks like they're checking the, the right elbow and the right wrist. Second down. Settle. Stopped by Eric Martin and Eric Dorsey. The clock running. Well, you can see the Falcons have really made their decision, although... I'm surprised that they're going with no huddle. That they don't have to force things here. Second and 12. Millen has a pass picked off by Carl Banks, and he's in the end zone, and the Giants take the lead. NFL touchdown but the first one was that, that that sack that he got that caused the interception and then the second one right here the interception on the pass to John Settle a 15 yard touchdown run by Carl Banks and why Hugh Millen throws this I have no idea why this play was called I have no idea 
why they just the Giants didn't have any timeouts why they just didn't come in there work the clock try and get field position don't let them have it you don't have to force anything when the score is tied so again the kickoff and what a sudden turn of events and change of complexion of this whole contest the Giants 23 the Falcons 16. Atlanta led by 10 with less than five minutes to play. And all of a sudden. Well, someone had to come in and take this game over on defense for the Giants. And obviously that guy was Carl Banks. Evan Cooper again. And again he is nailed. This time by Gugamo. Atlanta's two turnovers just killed him. That's what Marion Campbell was talking about yesterday. Two pass interceptions. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, in all all due respect to to Hugh Millen and 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 the great play that Carl Banks made, I really don't think that you bring a quarterback in off as an inexperienced quarterback off the field with four tight and have to throw on third and long. First down, Atlanta. They still have those two timeouts. It happened so fast they haven't been able to use it. Here's Hugh Miller. Incomplete. In the direction of Floyd Dixon. Hugh Millen, remember, was the quarterback. Remember at the end of the preseason, the uh, Los Angeles Rams waived two quarterbacks, Steve Dill and Hugh Millen, thinking maybe one of them would get claimed they'd bring the other one back. And lo and behold, the Falcons claimed both of them. And they ended up with Millen and Dill. Dill's been his starter. He hurt his wrist last week. And of course, Chris Miller's coming back. Here's Millen back to throw. I saw a hat go down, but no flag. Floyd Dixon made the catch. Now, of course, a hat goes down when a, a receiver goes out of bounds. That would be the one of the Falcon receivers running up the sideline went out of bounds. Of course, once he goes out of bounds, he becomes ineligible. He can't come back in and catch a pass. That's why they throw the hat, just to, so that they know that he is ineligible to come in and catch. Third and ten. Balls at the 19. Millen again back to throw. Has time. Has a man open. Floyd Dixon, Tom Flynn, made the stop. Less than a minute to play now. The Falcons take one of their two timeouts, a pickup of 22. Again, next week here on CBS, it'll all start at 12.30 with the NFL today. Then the Bears will be against New England in New England. Rams, New Orleans in a big one. Atlanta, Philadelphia. And then after that, the doubleheader. The Vikings, who are winning soundly today over Tampa Bay, visit Candlestick Park for San Francisco's hospitality. That's where John Madden and I will be. The Giants face Detroit again. Yep, got the old bus fired up down there and going to start <laughs> right when this thing's over. Start hauling across. We'll go across old Highway 40. You've been putting some miles on that chariot lately. Oh, back and forth. We went from New York to Dallas, Dallas, LA, LA, Atlanta, Atlanta, San Francisco, San Francisco, Washington. You might need a transfusion. Pass is complete. And it gets to the 20 yard line to Jesse Hester. This isn't over yet. Pickup of 39 yards. Hester very nearly broken. Remember, Falcons. the Falcons still have one timeout. Lock running with 35 seconds left to play. Dillon back to throw. Throws it out of bounds. Incomplete. Floyd Dixon got hit immediately. Lost the ball, but he went out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Well, he should have just thrown it out of bounds. There's you don't need a fast completion of one yard there. They didn't even get a yard. 
They must be saying now that he had possession and lost it out of bounds because they move it back even further. Second and 16 situation coming up. I don't know. I, I would think they're going to look at that on the uh, review. Of course, they already reviewed it and decided that they were right. Let's see. They ruled that he caught the ball, was hit, fumbled. Well, if he's 26 hit, seconds on the clock. And then the Giants knocked it out of bounds. The last guy that had control was Dixon. Now they're putting more time back on the clock again. It had run down to 21 seconds. It's back up to 27. Giants by touchdown. Hugh Millen is the quarterback. Pass is caught and dropped by Michael Haynes, but a flag on the play. Gary Reasons made the hit. Maybe there wasn't a flag on the play. Oh, he's put it back in his pocket now. They were refused. There was a flag. They're not going to refuse foul. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Second down. Still second down. Now what the Giants want to do is, is the is the Falcons need a touchdown. They're not going to do anything with a field goal. So they want to put them as far away from that goal line as they can. And make Hugh Millen, if he's going to throw the ball, have to throw the ball up the field more than if he were five yards closer. Second and 21. 23 seconds remain. Millen. Up the field. Pass is deflected and almost intercepted by Terry Kennard. Jesse Hester, the intended receiver. 16 seconds remain. Third down coming up. Good defense here. The, the Giants have two guys there, but the, the first time the ball went up, that. That, that could have been deflected for a touchdown, too. The deflector had to go get his deflection before it got to the red jersey. Third down. 16 seconds remain. Forget about the first down yardage now. Third and 21. They still have a timeout remaining, however. Millen gets it to settle. Settle hops out of bounds with nine seconds to go. Back at the 21 yard line, a pickup of 10. You know, as you say, the, the Falcons have nine seconds. They have one timeout left, but it's also fourth down. So if they don't make more than 11 yards, whether they have any more time or timeout doesn't make any difference. It boils down to this play for the Falcons. But they don't have to score a touchdown on this play. Nine seconds remaining. Giants 23, the Falcons 16. Millen gets away from the sack. Throws a jump shot. That's caught. Now can they get the clock stop? No, there's no time. No time left. Haynes made the catch but couldn't get in. Wow. There's still a discussion going on as to whether there is time left. And the officials are still staying there, and then they decided that's it. Jerry Mark Bright said that's it, and he waved the officials off the field. Hey, what a game that was. Wow. Bill Parcells looks like he has really drained. He went through it today. He knew. His team didn't play well, but at the end, they come up with the plays when they needed them. Watch Bill in here. He's just throwing a desperation jump ball up here. His team wins the jump ball. That's the good news, but the bad news is the time runs out. That's Harry Carson wrapped around Haynes and keeping him from getting in the end zone. And then some help arrives. So the final score, the Giants 23. Final score is, as a matter of fact, Giants 23, Atlanta 16. 
Stay tuned for the NFL Today's postgame show next. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Right now, the only thing that would taste better than a nice cold one is a cold filter pond. Can you draft anyone? Right. Time. Because if you want a beer whose rich, smooth draft taste oh. hasn't been changed by heat pasteurization, we've got it down cold. Cold filtered more genuine draft. It's as real as beer gets. Your life with Behind every single flight one of these makes stand the 60,000 professionals of United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Computerized voting, the wave of the future. It's fast and easy, but can we trust the results? Could you put the fix in in a national election? You only, only need bribe one person one person. The story tomorrow on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. All right, the New York Giants come from behind and push their record to five and three on the air. Pat Summerall standing by with one of their defensive heroes. Let's go out to Pat. Well, Carl Banks, it took a long time, but uh, you don't want to play too many like that, do you? No, we don't. And, uh, like I said, it couldn't have happened at a worse time for us. We were trying to get our second win in a row, and uh, they got to mixing things up. They creased a few runs on us, and then they gave us play action, which made it difficult for us to stop anything. Well, let's take a look right now while we have a chance, Carl, at those two remarkable plays you made at the end. Here's the interception. I don't think he ever saw you, do you? No, he didn't, and that was part of our game plan. If the back peels into the flat, we're supposed to take him right away, and... I read it perfectly, and uh, I guess that was inexperience on him. He came in, and he didn't see that we were taking that back the whole game, and he just threw it out there. I, I don't think he ever saw me. Carl Lawrence Taylor had cramps, we were told, in, in, the second, uh, in the second quarter. Didn't come out for the second half. Is he okay? Yeah, he's fine. He came out. He played a few plays. I think he was just a little dehydrated. It's pretty hot out here. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. Finally getting back in the sink of things and uh, trying to get some of these injuries healed up, and right now I'm looking forward to the next game. Well, Carl, congratulations, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now let's go back to Brent Musburger. All right, Pat and John, thank you very much. And uh, so Dick Buckus and Irv Cross, the uh, Giants survive a scare. And uh, you were talking to Coach Parcells earlier in the week. Yeah, he was worried about uh, having a letdown. He was worried about John Settle. And uh, he was right because he had a heck of a game. But, uh, they, you know, and this is the, 